another alleged
I think I got my distance right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, focal distances. Another alleged victim took the stand in the trial of former Sam how? Tammany Sheriff Jack Strain. How? How? Did not open it. Just auto played. Just auto played. It, it, it had been sitting there, and this fucking bullshit news site just decided to just auto play itself. I swear to fucking God. My legs are on fire, Karina. Like, literally on fire. Like, well, figuratively. But, yeah, they're on fire right now. Um. Hey, Cassidy. <laughs> Who posted that? Of course that was fucking Viscous that posted that. No. I wish it were a workout. Um, of course it was Viscous that just posted that to fucking memes. Uh... Cat, check your boy's latest post. <laughs> <laughs> and their criticism, though. I think it's fucking... I, hey, I think it's funny. Uh, buggy wash... Wash... Oh, Buggy was here. Sorry, I almost went with wash air. Um, thanks for the follow. Uh, I was just fucking getting started. Um, yeah, Cupcake fucking took that test. Got no score, basically, because they're vegan. Uh, um... See, I, I can't. I think it's. I think it's way. I think it's way better. I think it's way better. And it matched my nails. Um. Yeah, I think it's way better. Well, I kept the sound because I knew. I I already know what the deal was. If I fucking ditched Mother Anarchy, like you know, if I ditched the sound, you'd fucking throw a bitch fit. <laughs> you know, fucking, you'd lead a revolt up in this motherfucker. So, like, you know. Sound stays. I just needed the alert to be more subtle. No, of course not, Karina. Um, yeah, I, I too much screen real estate. Uh, Dgen sign goes up during Dgen story time. I've decided to keep it like off the screen unless I'm fucking with somebody, or we're talking about something like straight up Dgen. Yeah, I wanted the screen decluttered. It was on my computer, Caboose. So, yeah. Uh, it's just, um, it's a piece on um, the former sheriff uh, of St. Tammy. It's in uh, Louisiana. Uh, Cassidy, you fall. Uh, t Tammany, sorry, Tammany. Um, yeah, um. Fucking you fall in that story. Apparently the former sheriff, a uh, long time sheriff of St. Tammany Parish, which is a county in Louisiana. Um, <laughs> this motherfucker is going to be doing some time and they're going to have to keep him out of gen pop for sure. Apparently he was, um, <clears throat> he was steady fucking some kids and he's a cop. Right? Like, cop in jail plus kid fucker equals not a great time. They're going to have to keep that motherfucker out of Gen Pop for sure. Um, 30 witnesses is what the prosecutors have lined up. They just finished up um, some more testimony, like accuser testimony today. Like, yeah. This this motherfucker is going to be doing time. <laughs> yes. And we're just talking about a sheriff in uh, Louisiana who's got like he's going to have a rough time of it. Um he's been steady banging kids for a while. Um and so yeah, it's um 30 witnesses. 30 fucking witnesses. 30 fucking witnesses is what the prosecution has lined up for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> oh yeah, fuck him then. Cause and effect, baby. Oh yeah, like this motherfucker. <laughs> he's the former longtime sheriff of the county, of the parish, but of the county, right? He's the former sheriff plus a diddler. Keep him out of Gen Pop. Shit gonna get real for him. He's he's gonna have a rough time of it. Hey Charlotte. Enjoy your cleaning. Um Yeah. It's like oof, that motherfucker. Apparently, um, hold on, what was the, um, they let his wife testi uh, testify or something? Um, his, it, one of his, um, my legs are on fire right now, Kez. Um, one of his relatives apparently straight up accused him too. Like, accused him to his wife, accused him. Like, it, because the fucking, um, they, they put the wife on the stand and asked him, like, asked her what, you know, what did Jack say when, um, the relative accused him of the sexual assaults, right? Like, even his own family was in on, like, that motherfucker, that motherfucker right there, right? Like, even his own fucking family knew and was accusing him. Yeah. It's like, oof. I, I, <laughs> it's, it's fucked. It's a fucked story. Um, oh, Wither. I mean, I don't like to joke about sexual assault as being an aspect of prison just because it's a fucking bad look, but I, he won't, he won't get car baby became a liability i don't think he's gonna get fucking sexually assaulted that's not what happens to people like him in jail i wish it didn't hey squiddy um yeah he's gonna get murdered yeah he'll get he'll get beat up many times he'll get tortured and then eventually he'll get murdered yeah that's 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 what happens it shouldn't i wish it didn't but yeah that's what's going to happen. They're going to have to keep him separated. Because if they don't, I mean, homie's dead. Straight up. Um, yes, Wither, that actually does increase your chances of sexual assault joining the United States military. Drastically. I read all of it, but the I never got through the dead whores tell no lies one. I, I, I got through four out of the five. That's the same porn chick, right? Uh, sheriffs are high in the white uh, authoritarian hierarchy. They'll keep him separated. Trust the system. Protect the system. Uh, that's one of the worst. Yeah, that's her. Okay, yeah, it's the lesbian, like the lesbo porn chick, right? Like, So I was like, is this like, like Lily Cade, like the lesbian porn broad? Right? Like, is this, this is the porn chick? <laughs> Interesting. Um, uh, or the UN or unfortunately doctors without borders. Um, that yeah, GL with a little bunch of fucking shit. Um, spend his entire sentence in solitary confinement for his safety, which won't actually protect him. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it depends on uh, who's running corrections. As to whether some of the CEOs make mistakes, right? Because that's the shit that goes down. There's going to be some people that are running corrections um, that will happily look the other way, despite the fact that he's a former sheriff. The 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 the, the kitty diddling will be higher up on the order of priorities than the former sheriff for at least a couple of them. And so there's going to be a couple of COs in there that, you know, Oh, what happened? Yeah. They're going to have to keep him isolated his entire fucking sentence. 
Oh. Whole thing's fucked. Um. The Pentagon announced, while we're speaking about the U.S. military, the Pentagon announced that the uh, strike that killed 10 Afghan civilians didn't violate law. The um, Lieutenant General, uh, Sammy Said, um, the Inspector General for the Air Force, reported, it said in a report, it was an honest mistake, but it's not criminal conduct, random conduct, nor negligence. Um... He said uh, the people Im directly involved in the strike, which took place during the U.S.-led evacuation, genuinely believed that they were targeting an imminent strike. The intended target of the strike, the vehicle, its contents, and occupant were generally ass genuinely assessed at the time as an imminent threat to U.S. forces and mission at Hamid Karzai International Airport. However, Said the, uh, said, uh, Said said, the interpretation of intelligence and the observations of a targeted car and its occupants over eight hours was regrettably inaccurate. What likely broke down, and this is the part, this is, I love this line, right? Because this line says absolutely nothing. What likely broke down was not the intelligence, but the correlation of that intelligence to a specific house. Isn't that a failure of intelligence? Sir, there's an imminent threat at that house. Oh, well, it was just the wrong house. Yeah, you're at war in the region. There's always an imminent threat. That's that's just water is wet. You need air to breathe territory. Right? You fucked up. Intelligence broke down. What likely broke down was not the intelligence, but the correlation of the intelligence to that specific house. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure that's a breakdown of intelligence. <laughs> um, yeah, I know, right, Carpe? Uh, they had reasonable suspicion based on the bias they set out to confirm. Uh, the U.S. military believed it was targeting IS militants, planning an attack on the evacuation operations three days after a suicide bombing. The car was thought to have contained explosives like those used in the previous attack. After the preliminary investigation, the Pentagon admitted on September 7th that it had been a tragic mistake. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. The Pentagon said that the surviving family members would be compensated. If that isn't neoliberal capitalism writ large, I don't know what is. Yeah, yeah, we, we we know we know we we bombed like some random civilians halfway across the globe, but um, the surviving family members are gonna get a check. So we cool? We good? We done here? I mean. What do you want from us? <laughs> Said said that there is no uh, that there was not one point of failure or a person to be blamed for the error. Hmm, convenient. He also said it was not in his responsibilities to decide whether someone should be punished for the error. <laughs> what are they going to do? Give them Raytheons. <laughs> General Dynamics, maybe a little Lockheed, some Boeing, maybe a little Raytheon. You know, something like that. Uh, uh. uh civilian murder yeah yeah basically it is um so did you see this shit with the with the Alec Baldwin crap the armorer's defense attorney the 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 the, uh, the attorney for the armor straight up fucking floated like a like a conspiracy, straight up floated it. Um, how did a live round get on set, and who put that live round on set? There was a box of dummy rounds labeled dummy. We don't know whether the live round came from that box. We're assuming somebody put that live round in that box. (laughs) 
Nice to Daryl. Kyle Rittenhouse. That's it. That's it. I was like, wait, the reference to the skateboard. The, the reference to the skateboard. I'm like, where have I heard that recently? Rittenhouse. Oh, yeah, tech support. Yeah, we, we covered that the night it happened. <laughs> Oops, I mistook you for the guy I meant to shoot. My bad. Just mistaken identity. That's fucking what happened in Afghanistan wasn't murder. It was a tragic case of mistaken identity. It was not murder, Caboose. My bad. Sorry I shot you. Mistaken identity. Whoopsie. <laughs> oh. Man, it's wild to see conservatives molding about uh, how ba Baldwin's anti-gun stance led to the shooting. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of glossing over the fact that Live Round is actually using cinema tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, GL fucking, look, we've talked about this at live. I just wanted to fl I just wanted to float that one. Uh, I, Carpe? Yeah. They're going to require standing for those rules proof of the investigation. How the bullet got in the box. A bullet got in the box. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. Yeah, Joe. Like, it's... Oh, um, okay. So, I'm going to fucking, like, as Kat would say, Tokyo Drift this bitch. Um, this motherfucker has been pissing me off. All right? This motherfucker has been pissing me off. He's been pissing a few people off, but he's been pissing me off for a while. All right? So you know, the cost of $16 an hour, $16 is the cost of his potato dish, like a, a, like a side of mashed potatoes, I think, in his restaurant is $16. Um, I, 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 I hate this fucker. Like legitimately, like you guys know, like I, I, I stray away from like, I don't have time to hate. I don't have time to hate. I hate this fucker. Right? Oh, yeah. It's almost two grand. Guys, it's almost two grand. Um, I hate this dude. I hate him. He takes a decent cut of meat. He pays somebody $16 an hour to cook it. And then he charges some rich douchebag two grand. And he acts like he's some holier than thou fucking icon. He's, he's literally the meme, Crix. The fucking eh, Salt Bay meme. He's literally the dude who is the meme. I hate him. I hate him. He's everything wrong with food. Support. <laughs> Eat ass. Get the fuck out. Oh, that's fucking great. That's hilarious. Oh, eat ass. Uh, tech support. If you told me there was a, a motion up to like expropriate his restaurant, I'd I'd sign. Like whatever. He's an asshole. Fuck him. Um, and I just wanted, I wanted to conduct an experiment. I'm going to show you a picture of somebody in a restaurant that charges $2,000 for a steak. The chef should be making 75 to $150 an hour minimum minimum. I want to show you a picture of somebody. 
I want to see now if you have seen this picture before and you know who this is because of that don't don't speak up but if you've never seen this picture I want you to tell me who this is because I'm gonna show I'm gonna show Chad a picture and I want to see here who can identify this person do any of you know who this is It's Michael Jackson. This is Michael Jackson. Yeah. Nope. Caboose, this is what Michael Jackson looked like. I I came across the photo the other day and I was wondering if anybody would be able to identify him. He was, um, except every before every show, Joe Jackson would get in his face and tell him, you're fucking ugly, your nose is too goddamn big, and you fucking can't sing right. Seriously. 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 Every fucking time. Before he would go on stage, Joe Jackson would insult his... Your nose is too fucking big. You're fucking ugly. Every time. You wonder, you wonder why he was obsessed with plastic surgery on the nose? Yeah. Say, say hello to his abusive father. The only thing Joe Jackson didn't beat was cancer. that that's going on in chat um yeah he did zippy at at michael's funeral joe jackson tried to plug his new uh, his new fucking business i i legitimately like yeah britney's dad michael jackson's dad special place in hell for parents like that special place in hell for parents like that um yeah I just wanted you to see what Michael Jackson looked like because a lot of you never saw Michael Jackson and like you either see the footage of him as a like a young kid like a little boy or you see the older post-surgery Michael Jackson um and I wanted you to see what like adolescent becoming a man Michael Jackson looked like before he went over the uh, like completely over the fucking waterfall he was becoming a he, I mean he was a gorgeous human being in a lot of ways he's a creative genius and I'm in the camp I've never been sold on the kid touching I'll tell you that right now I've never been sold I've, I've, I've heard cases from both sides of the aisle and no one has ever convinced me a direction. I, I still don't fucking know. I, I, I'm, I still, I, I'm, I'm in the camp of, I don't, I'm not sure we'll ever know. Vitiligo. Yes. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to think. I've read about it for years and don't either. Yeah, I, I don't. All I know is what Macaulay Culkin has said. Macaulay Culkin hung out with him for ages. Ages. And he's like, he never did anything untoward. He never tried to. He never looked at me funny. He never touched me. 
he he was just a he said he was a gentle i think he said he was a kind gentle soul who just missed his childhood like i i it's all i have to go on like i don't have any first-hand accounts the kids that he supposedly touched it's all his parents filing the lawsuits and shit and their their parents filing the lawsuits and shit against the estate even right i don't Yeah, oh yeah, Macaulay still stands by his words. Like, it, 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 I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, with the HBO one or something like that, Crix? Yeah, it was pretty one-sided. Um, I, I, Cupcake, I think that's it. I think he was just a broken dude who missed his childhood. He, like, didn't get a childhood, so he tried to have it as an adult when he was a fucking gajillionaire, and it freaked people out. Carpe, I love that you fucking know the movie Saved. I love all... I love everything Macaulay Culkin is in. I love everything Macaulay Culkin is in. I grew up with him. I had crushes on him. I, I had a crush on him. Him and Doogie. Um, Neil Patrick Harris and Macaulay Culkin. We're all around the same age. And I... I, I love Macaulay. Like, Macaulay is fucking hilarious. He, he managed to, like pull it together in the end yeah neil never had like neil fucking just cruised through that shit um oh yeah of course i know about page master <laughs> oh my girl oh that made so many people cry Yeah, that movie was rough. That movie was rough. Um, let's see. Did I? Let's refresh that. Cool. Oh, for fuck's sake. I don't want the... It, for the ages, they didn't upload the highlights. Now they're uploading the highlights. Delete. <laughs> Delete it. All right. Oh, he does. He, he looks funny. Kubus, he looks funny. But it doesn't matter. Sometimes you have to understand. Um, oh, Rad. It's... It's sweet. But it is... Yeah, it's, it's a massive tearjerker. Like, you're going to cry. Just know that. Um... Oh, no, I get that, Karina. Everybody goes through phases like that. Everybody goes through phases like that. Um, hey, Nellar. Oh, the scene with the glasses. <laughs> okay, that's enough, my girl. I'm going to fucking cry. <laughs> I'm already tearing up just thinking about that scene. Um, Jesus Christ. But, yeah, no, uh, Macaulay is weird looking. But sometimes personality and... Your, your persona transcends your looks, right? Like, there's a few leading men that are like that, that are kind of weird-looking, kind of goofy-looking, asymmetric. Um, but, yeah, the man has a 20 in character, right? Like, Macaulay Culkin is just an interesting dude who's lived an interesting life. Um, yeah, Tom Hanks is in that category. Tom Hanks is fucking weird looking. He's not traditionally handsome. Um. Uh, yeah, no. Like I said, enough, enough fucking, no. Um. Yeah, they got a vibe that kills it. Yeah. There's, there's no fucking way you don't hang out with Macaulay Culkin and you have a blast. Right? Hanging out with Macaulay Culkin is guaranteed to be a lifetime memorable experience. The dude is just fun to be around, apparently. He's really interesting to be around. Um, he and Seth Green are, like, close friends. Very close friends. They, they, um, they filmed a movie. I talked about this once on stream when I watched it over a weekend. They filmed a movie where they went to Thailand 
Um, Seth's character apparently runs away from a marriage or runs away from an engagement or a wedding. And Macaulay is, um, it's, it's fucking, who's the other, uh, fucking dude, uh, from SNL? I forget. It's the dude from SNL and Seth Green and Macaulay is on a fucking like tour fishing boat with his like older Vietnamese, uh, Thai, I'm sorry, Thai, uh, Thai partner. And he's just, he, his character has lived in Thailand for years because he fled the Midwest and he just, he wanted to live. And he partnered up with this dude who's like twice his age and they just have a wonderful life together. Shuttling tourists around. It was, the entire movie was an excuse for Seth and Macaulay to hang out in Thailand. The entire fucking movie is just them writing a vacation for themselves so the bros can hang out in Southeast Asia for a bit. And fucking the character is so Macaulay Culkin. It's so in his wheelhouse. And it, it, it's just, an, it's, an, it's a great movie. It's not a, it's not a good movie. But understanding that it's just a couple of bros who grew up in the film industry, grew up in TV, were child actors survived it, came out the other side, and have a bond the likes of which very few people can understand, writing a vacation for themselves, right? Like, let's find an excuse to go on vacation to Southeast Asia and hang out in the fuck, you know, around the water and get drunk. The movie's amazing. <laughs> you know, you see it with that context and you're like, this is, this is cool as fuck. Some distilled catharsis. Yeah. Um, he was a fan of theirs. They heard uh, they made a joke in a video about contact and they did the same episode as well. Uh, it did the same day the episode went out. Apparently, they never felt more honored than an actor. They felt like watching their stuff came out. Um, oh, Red Letter Media with Macaulay. Um, yes. Um, actually, I've seen some of, some of it. I've never watched, sat down and watched the whole thing. So it's this movie starring Seth Green and Macaulay Culkin as Seth Green and Macaulay Culkin in Thailand. Well, Seth is Seth is acting a little bit. Seth is in character. Macaulay is just doing what what Macaulay does. Yeah, being his weird, fabulous self. He's like I've I've never been able to pin him down. Right, like he's he's like gender fluid he's at least super comfortable he's at least super comfortable in his skin he just he just doesn't give a fuck right like playing pansexual gay icons drag queen he, he just he just doesn't give a shit he's really fucking comfortable and he he can play anything and everything and he just yeah he's it's always interesting to see macaulay on screen because he just does that um, yeah, it's a good, it's a good watch. Um, it's just a couple of bros hanging out get, as an excuse to get drunk in Southeast Asia. I, I enjoy shit like that. Ah, uh, let's see. Oh, are we, wait, are we redoing Howard the Duck? Um, I, Caboose, I, I haven't heard anything terrible about him. Yeah, like, that's the thing. Like, yeah, he's he's supposedly straight. Like, but... Holy shit, man. He's... He, he reads... Like, bisexual, pansexual, gender fluid... Like a motherfucker. Yeah. So he either is one of those like super comfortable straight dudes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, Cassie. He's either one of those super comfortable straight dudes who just is like, yeah, I'm who gives a shit? Like, I know who I am. It doesn't matter. Right? Like, who cares if I dress up as a, a as a club kid and a drag queen or, you know, I make out with a dude for a movie. Like, I'm going home to my my, you know, partner and I've got a kid on the way and shit like that, right? Like, he's either one of those really fucking comfortable straight dudes or, you know, he's got some tendencies he doesn't talk about. Either way, I love him to death. I always have and I always will. Um, and the fact that his name is Macaulay Macaulay Culkin Culkin just makes me love him more and more. 
I love that about him. The fact that he let the internet pick his new middle name and they picked Macaulay Culkin and he legally changed it. I, I adore that man. So, yeah, there's there's me fucking just I like I said, Neil Patrick Harris, Harris and Macaulay Culkin. Those those were my boyhood crushes. Um a fucking ge- a, a, a child prodigy genius doctor and a miscreant who like tortured and nearly murdered a couple of people that tried to fuck fuck around on uh with his uh, with his home right yeah fuck around and find out embodied as a child and child prodigy genius doctor these were the two that I crushed on um Oh, fucking Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Yeah, I never... Something about him annoyed me. Something about him always annoyed me. I don't know what it was. Jesus Christ. I don't know who that is. I'm not not a fucking wee Brad. Um. Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> so Radhom has a type. So. What I'm hearing, Radhom, is that when I had, like, bleached white into gray hair as a, as a teenager, is that sort of really fucking effeminate, twinky type, just lanky and just stick fucking thin, um, you would have been drooling over me, huh? Um, because <laughs> I've, I've had hair like that. Um, he cute. Yeah, I've looked like that. Like, legitimately. Bye, Kez. Sleep sleep as well as you can. Catch you later. Um, yeah, Teen Me would have been into that. How old are you, Rad? How old are you? Are we around the same age? Am I your elder? How does this work out? It's difficult to tell with the facial hair. <laughs> Can't get a read on you. Um. Oh. JTT and I are fucking basically the same age. Interesting. Um, <laughs> thanks, Dirty Daddy Pig 420. Um, I seem to recall, like, the... Oh, wait, did he come out? I didn't know that. I had no idea that fucking Jonathan Taylor Thomas had come out as gay. 
Did he come out as gay? It says here he came out as gay. Hmm. Um. 33 about to hit 34. The receding hairline in the beard probably makes it look older. Yeah, I, I was putting you in my age category. You're a little younger than me. <laughs> do I do I need to go on my hermetics rant tech support do I need to go on my hermetics rant um hey puka um hmm. Kaiser got some oh is that that looks like kimchi and rice uh, no, it's not on the bingo card. Yeah, that's kimchi and rice. Kaiser eating... Kaiser, there's a hair in your rice. Kaiser, did you pick the hair out of your rice, Kaiser? <laughs> there's a long-ass fucking black hair in your rice, Kaiser. Uh, so, I know Kez talked about it. Like, who all saw this crazy shit by the fucking lesbian pornographer chick? Like, I, I guess, like, anybody who raided over with Kez has, has heard about this shit ad nauseum. Anybody who didn't raid over with Kez, you probably haven't caught wind of this shit. <laughs> no, it doesn't, uh, Red Hom. Um, Kaiser, uh, yeah, fucking long-ass hair in that photo. Um... It's not nonsense. It's not. It's not fun. So, Kez sent me a bunch of links. I don't... I'm not going to read them on air. Like, I'm not going to fucking... Like, if you want the links, I'll DM them to you, but... Yeah, it's the genocidal transphobe. Um, the website's down. Um... It's a bunch of reading. It's a bunch of reading. It's like a, it's a screed. It's a series of screeds. Um, yeah, it, it, Lily Cade, um, she fucking short redhead lesbian porn star slash pornographer. Um, uh, yeah, Kez fucking sent me a DM earlier in the day and was like, um, have you seen the fucking unhinged mass shooter level transphobic manifesto circling the internet? And of course, I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't run in those circles. Um, and, like, it, it's, it's, it's unhinged. It's unhinged, for sure. Um, I read four out of five of them before I just couldn't take it anymore. I'm like, Ugh, I can't. I just can't. I can't read any more of this shit. <laughs> Apparently, I stopped at, like, the worst one, too. Um, I, I... Cat. All right. Look. I'm going to read two sentences. And I'm going to put massive trigger warnings on this. All right. This isn't even the worst. This is by far not even the worst. Okay. You. This is just, this is. No. No. This is the ramblings and rantings of a potentially violent, disturbed person. You, you have to contextualize it. You have to understand. The, <sighs> Trans women are men. 
trans women are the weakest, vilest, most pathetic men on earth, too weak to even kill themselves rather than control the horrifying shadow monster they're grooming your children to serve. The ones who kill themselves are the strong ones. Weak men deserve the Dark Lord because it's the path of least resistance. This is the shallow end of this screed. I warned you. That's, that's, that's the fucking, like, tame part of this. It's the tame, it's the tame part. She wrote it, Karina. It's, it's her writing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cupcake. I, I could show you here. Um, since the Discord community is um, adults only. Oh, you know what? Here, I can show you. I can show you this. I can show you this. This is Lily Cade. This was published on her website. That's where this stuff comes from. Oh, you want an ugly photo? Oh, you want an ugly photo? Here she is at AVN. This is Lily Kidd. That's who wrote what we're talking about. Um, public, have you seen the Lily Kidd screeds? Um, I'll, I'll DM them to you. I'm, I'm warning you right now though. If this person goes genocidal, like school shooter on us. Yeah. Straight up. I'm, I'm warning you now, bro. Um, I just read a passage from one of her published works on her website. She's a, okay, so Lily Cade is a lesbian porn star slash pornographer. That's what you need to know, public. Um, she recently published on October 29th. October, October 29th, October 30th, and November 2nd. A series of blog posts that basically went off the deep end. Um, like sincerely off the deep end calling for like the genocide of trans people. Um, I, I, I read a passage. I'm not comfortable reading it again. I, I, I just read two sentences and as I described it, this is the shallow end of the pool. All right. The shallow end of the pool. I'm uncomfortable reading on air. And you know the things I talk about and the topics I talk about and the places I'll go and the dark places I'll go. It's rough. I DM'd, them, DM'd the links to you. If you want to read it, feel free. But no. Yeah. The BBC just had her on a few days ago. Um, if you want public, if you just want to skip a lot of the rigmarole, start with the dead whores tell no lies post. There you go. That'll... Cat, I have no idea. Uh, the BBC had her on a few days ago to talk about trans issues. Yeah. This isn't like some just the ramblings of like some random pornographer who posted on her blog. 
she is fairly well known. And she has a media outlet. So, just saying. Um, this part I can read. Um, so we know who we're dealing with. The Christians were right. Gay marriage was the fall of Rome. You should have given us civil unions and not and not been so cruel, but I get it now. If you had possessed speakers with greater nuance and articulation and not just angry, stupid peasants, things might have gone down differently. You saw the pedophile cult to whom everyone else in the gay community but the lesbians were happy to cede the culture. After gay marriage, most of the respectable homosexuals left the spotlight and did whatever they did. Fuck you, you spineless F-words. You dare, uh, how dare you stand for this? You know what a man is to cocksucking, ass licking, piss drinking F-words. You're fucking men to our men. How could you let this happen to our children? Where the fuck are your balls? The lesbians knew. That's why they hate us. The lesbians know. We tried to warn you the whole time, but you wouldn't listen. We couldn't stand alone against these pedophiles because they're men and we're just women. Where are the Christians? You stood up to me, but not these monsters. Oh, she goes on like big pharma rants. She goes on like the uh, medical industry rants. That's that's dude. That's that's tame as shit. Yeah, public. That's tame as shit. Um. Gay versus lesbian beef. Be wild and. Uh, Jack, just some fucking lesbian porn star who like lost her, lost the fucking plot and just published a whole bunch of blog posts that just, yeah. Um. It is, Cat. It's a very spooky conversation. Um, when she starts asking about where the fuck is the Second Amendment... Oh, yes. She goes there. Oh, yes. Um... Well, for two, she sees America as the hub of this behavior. It, they, she sees it as sort of, um, we are, we are the origin point for much of this. The, the, the matrix, the Hollywood, uh, media sphere, that sort of thing. So she's, she's making a call to Americans to, well, in her words, uh, um, uh, American men, where are your balls? That's, that's, that's her verbiage. Where the fuck are your balls, America? Uh, Radhom? She, yes. Yes, that's her. The one who's been accused of multiple sexual assaults. Yeah. Same Lily Cade. Yeah. Um, it is, isn't it, Kat? It makes you do very strange things. Guilt is crazy. Be where the fuck are your balls, America? Behold the great replacement. It's already here. Not China, not Arabs. Trannies. The Matrix. 
smartphones. Any generation of American men before this one would rip the still beating hearts from every last shadow monster for this, wouldn't they? Uh, wouldn't they? And beat every last smartphone to bits and hang the lords of the algorithm in public because they were not addicted to digital masturbation. Behold the mark of the beast. Which fucking side are you on? You're going to keep jerking off and just take it? Where the fuck is the Second Amendment? She, I, from, I, I read, I read the oldest to this point, and the way I read it was a psychotic break. It sounded like a psychotic break. I'm not kidding you. It starts off... Um... It starts off different. And it, it like, it becomes what it becomes both beastical it's both it's both it's it's a manifest it's it's a compil taken it in a compilation it's a manifesto but it is most assuredly a called arms oh yes this this is this is stochastic terrorism 100 percent yeah it 100 percent it, it, it is um she talks about executing people she talks about what needs to happen. She talks about historical context, militaristic context. She asks about militarization in the face of this assault on humanity. She, um, yeah. Uh, I would, Jack, no, Jack, I would tell you to read the Unabomber Manifesto because this isn't it. This is, this is, this is, this is dangerous territory for me to discuss, but Ted Kaczynski was legitimately a genius. 100%. He was legitimately a genius who was, who underwent an actual CIA operation at his university. They fucked with his head. They legitimately, he is, no, this isn't conspiracy theory. Legi Ted Kaczynski is legitimately a subject they, they nicknamed uh, lawful. And the intent was to use interrogation tactics to undermine his ideology, his belief system, and cause him doubt and flip his ideology. They fucked with him. Hardcore. They took a mathematical genius and basically just shook him relentlessly using military intelligence grade interrogation, interrogation tactics. And then you end up with the Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber that we know, right? That's an entirely different story. This, this is, oof, this is more school shooter territory. This is Columbine territory. This is a mentally disturbed individual who likely underwent abuse and it is fomenting it is fomenting in ways that are just now manifesting. Um yeah. It's it's there there's indicators in this screed that something went down. Besides the fact that she has been accused of sexual assault herself. Um, there's a passage in here. Men in power always fuck underage whores. What else do you do with power? Once you get enough money and you do enough coke and enough legal whores and you've driven enough Porsches, I mean, why not, right? Then they get addicted to it. The blood of virgins and the power trip.
it, it, it is extremely suspicious. Like it's it's a huge fucking red flag. Like it is. Um. Yeah. And she does the, um, she does the historic revisionist weird fucking conspiracy shit too. America stood up to a pedophile cult once. Lincoln stood up to the pedophile cult, took a bullet for it. Because Abraham Lincoln, now there was a man with some fucking balls. The South was a pedophile cult. It, it, it's... These documents are fucking... She does her own research, I'm telling you. To a sane mind, to a well-adjusted mind, these read crazy. But to a crazy mind, to an even on the edge of a mind, right? This is a call. This is a call to arms. This Christians, fundamentalists, QAnoners, white nationalists, KKK members, though they might not like the Deep South part. Um, yeah, public. This, diff, this could cause somebody. I don't say it will, but it could. It could be the thing that pushes someone over the edge. It is... So you know, I, I've, I've... Okay, hang on, hang on. All right. That's one document. There's five of them. Okay? One document. They're not brief. They are. They're long. A couple of them are brief. But these are these are manifestos. These are screeds. Um Or a complete manic break, Jack. Or a complete manic break. Um, <clears throat> I do want to cover one section. She has one document that she called the red pill. In which she speaks on the matrix both the media production the concept of the matrix and the wachowskis themselves it is I'm, I'm contemplating how much of this I'm comfortable covering. I'm really, I'm really, I, I want to read these to you in their entirety, but I also don't. I want no one to see these, but I want everyone to see them. And I hope you can understand the internal conflict, right? Like this is less TOS for me and more ethical dilemma. I think... People need to know about this. But I don't want to platform this person. But people need to hear this. Well, Puka, in this case, it's part of a grander conspiracy for her. Um... She speaks about herself in the third person, by the way. Okay, this is just inappropriate. 
this is inappropriate to have this going on in the background. Um, I'm going to jump around this document. I'm going to jump around this document. But there is a, there is a, there's a paragraph that I think you need to hear. Because I think she's not alone in this sentiment. Yes, tech support. And that's what freaks me out. I've heard this rhetoric before. This isn't the first time I've heard it. And this is echoes of from the past sort of situation. And that is concerning to me. More so than just platforming a crazy person. It's the fact that I've heard this rhetoric before. Did you watch The Matrix before you posted that meme? Did you watch The Matrix before you spoke of the red pill? No. Did you post about the red pill on Reddit or Twitter or wherever you hang out and then not immediately break your smartphone? Lily Cade hates you. If you if you had made her empress of the world, she would have summarily executed any man who posted a meme from a movie he had not seen, a quote from a book he had not read, and certainly any man who is stupid enough to think the red pill has anything whatsoever to do with anything besides getting the fuck out of the fucking matrix, you stupid fucking tranny cucks. Lily Cade would have killed so many people if you'd made her empress. Anyone who asked the question, can I ask you a question? Most of the producers in Hollywood, so many weak men. Good thing you didn't make her empress. Shadows shouldn't rule. Look on the bright side. It's an opportunity. Now you get to watch The Matrix. I'll wait. Do you, did you like it? Do you get it now? You don't need a smartphone. I go to the gym every day. I'm dead sober. I suborn no addiction but fitness. I use a bike instead of a car. I cook my own food and have it cooked uh, and have it cooked for me by those I ride for. I surf. I parasail. I do what I want. I work on farms. I work construction. I volunteer. I find homes for horses. I serve. I live. I go wherever I want to go. I do what I feel is right. I can live on nothing. I can live better than you've ever lived in your whole castrated life for four hundred dollars a month. Any random day in my life. Life is more interesting than your entire existence because I left the matrix, because I pulled the cord out, because I took the red pill, you pussy bitch. I fucked 4,000 women within the matrix when I served the Dark Lords, and the life I had when I left is better by several orders of magnitude. I took the red pill, you fat sack of shit. If you had any balls left, you'd take it too, but your dad didn't even have the balls, so how could you? I'm going to skip a bunch of fucking passages here. And I want you to hear this part. This is the part that... (sighs) Two real artists sold their souls to free you from the Matrix. The Brothers Wachowski, come correct. They were brothers when their mothers bore them, uh, when, when their mother bore them. They were brothers when their balls dropped. They were brothers when they made bound, and they were brothers when they gave their souls to make the matrix, and they will be brothers when they lynch the shadow monsters they are feeding and speak the truth instead. Let's not ris- disrespect these men's mothers by pretending to believe the disgusting minstrel show of womanhood these form- formerly apex artists have decided to devote their creative energy to instead of making beautiful, nuanced movies is the same thing as a woman. It's a fetish it's an addiction it's disgusting it's wrong stop pitying weak men that is as far as I will go into discussing this topic it gets darker it gets more depressing it gets more conspiratorial it gets more violent it gets more manic It gets more everything. Just know that there is a woman who has the attention of TERFs, of red-pilled men, of the BBC. She has a platform. She has a voice. 
and she's using that voice to stir violence against the trans community in a very real way, in a very unhinged way. It's happening right now. Those documents are making the rounds. And it's not just the trans community. It's not just the leftists. It's not just the social justice warriors. It's not just the people who are concerned spreading those documents. I assure you, the people who agree are spreading those documents as well. That's why I, that is my conflict in this, is that those documents represent very real potential for violent action. And I think that there needs to at least be excerpts spread around. I think there needs to be partial screenshots spread around so people are aware of exactly where the rhetorical level is. This isn't, we don't think you're women territory. This is, we don't think you're women and we think you serve a dark conspiracy occult trying to take over the world and do us harm. And therefore we see it as justified violence, as self-defense to engage in violent action against you. Very literal calls to arms. I think it's, um, I mean, Cassidy, given that the Wachowski sisters both have transitioned, I think we know where they come down on this one. She's, she's not just a turf. Yes, Karina. She is attempting to ga engage in, yes, they both did. Nonsense. They are both, uh, the, she is attempting to engage in what we would call stochastic terrorism. This is where you actually weaponize words. Again, I'm not going to silence her, but this is where you become hypervigilant. This is where, you know, this is the precipice. This is the event horizon where words transaction uh, tra uh, transfer into action. Okay? This is what it looks like. This is the very event horizon of where words, which I'm sorry, I will never censor. I will not. It, transition into violent action. This is that moment that everybody's head needs to be on a swivel for. This is that moment where these words can inspire someone. These words can push someone over the edge. This isn't just somebody standing on a street corner yelling something crazy. This isn't just Dave Rubin. This isn't just Ben Shapiro. This is violent calls to action. Somebody may heed. This is very really the call of fire in a crowded theater. This could cause something. And you need to be aware of that. So there you go. Ah. Uh. Yeah, but Exol, a broken clock is right twice a day. You still fix the clock. You replace the batteries. You replace the gears. You replace, uh, replace the inner workings. You don't, you don't look at the broken clock and go, well, it's right occasionally. Let's keep it. You fix the fucking clock. Um, so... Yeah. <sighs> Good.
Caboose. It's my favorite passage in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's my favorite passage. 40 foot high flaming letters written on a mountainside in a dist on a distant planet in a faraway galaxy. Sorry for the inconvenience. What more do you want from God but an apology of some sort? If God existed, the only thing I want to hear from God is an apology. That's it. We apologize for the inconvenience. Yeah, like it's that's the only thing you want to you want to hear from God is an apology. How dare you? How fucking dare you? The trick to flying is falling and missing. Yes. Uh, I have, I have a leather bound copy of the entirety of it. And yeah. Oh, see cat. I figure I don't like, you know, eh. um, yeah. My mom has it right now. My mom has my copy of Hitchhiker's Guide. She's been working her way through it. A while ago, um, she, 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 you know, we were talking about it and I said, do you want to read my favorite book? And she was like, yeah, yeah, I do. I'm like, all right, here, I'll, I'll get, I'll get it for you. And I loaned it to her. So she's had it for a while. Um, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. But. I think the high watermark for me is the audiobook of the first book by Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry reading The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is. It's good. It's good. Um, yeah. The plays are good. The radio plays are good. Don't get me wrong. I like the movie too. I like the movie. Um, but yeah, for me, <laughs> slutty Bart fast. Um, I can't tell you all of the hitchhiker's guide fucking pseudonyms I've used because some of them have been associated with stuff. I can't tell you which ones I've used. Um, cause I, I can't even keep them track in my head anymore. Which ones were used necessarily for what there's one in particular. I know that like, I can't ever associate with like it's a burned word in my vocabulary um because it did some shit um that audiobook is a masterpiece it is it is it's a fucking masterpiece uh as far as movies go hitchhiker's guy is legit nice no i i i i think it dude most deaf which I know he's got a new name, but he will forever be most ne most deaf to me. Most deaf did Ford perfectly. I, I I think Ford Prefect was embodied very effectively by most deaf. I, I I know some fans had disagreements about that, but for me, he nailed that fucking role. I I, I adored him. Yeah, he's my fa he's my favorite interpretation of Ford as well. I I think he, he fucking nailed that character. I, I love his interpretation of Ford. Um, yeah. And let's face it. Marvin's voice is... Um, mm. I agree, Caboose. <laughs> hey, Flywing. Um, yeah. I, I, you know. Alan Rickman, man. Alan fucking Rickman. <sighs> the real answer, Ryan? Is the one that you come up with. The 
the real answer is the one you find for yourself. That's that's the cat Sterner like that. It's the, the truth of the matter is is that yeah that's the that's as, as deep a philosophical answer as I'll ever be able to give. What is the meaning of life? The one that you find. That's it. No one can ever tell you anything differently. It's anarchism is the command tech support. Um, nonsense is embracing the absurdity. Um, screw that. We want to make money. Um, yeah, I... Douglas was, I miss him. I miss him. Uh, let's see, what else? <laughs> Give me the answer. Um, the answer is the Dow. Um, So, I'm going to read you a headline, and then you guys are um, probably going to be able to interpret it the correct way. So, the headline that was published in the news organizations for this, for this incident, it happened in Chicago. NBC ran this headline, right? So, not even like Fox. NBC ran this headline. CPD, Chicago Police Department. CPD officer hit in chest after gun discharges during argument with wife. A Chicago police officer has been taken to an area hospital in critical condition after he was shot in the chest when a gun went off during an argument with his wife, who's also a police officer with the department. cop was involved in a domestic violence incident with his wife and got shot in the fucking chest by his cop wife. Forty percent more likely to um, to be involved in a domestic violence incident if you're married to a police officer. What happens if they're both cops? Somebody getting shot tonight. Chicago PD officer hit in chest after gun discharges during argument with wife. Cop number one married to cop number two gets into an argument. Somebody pulls a gun and shoots the other cop. Officer hit in chest after gun discharges during argument with wife. One, all of a sudden the wife isn't a cop. But he is still an officer. Two, the gun discharged. Oh, oh, did it. Is that, is that the gun discharged did it? Not that she shot him in the chest while they were arguing. Hmm, interesting. That's, that's an interesting way to put it. Hmm. By the way, he's in critical condition. The wife was allowed to remain at home, merely questioned by, de de by detectives. I love that headline. <clears throat> I love that fucking headline. Talk about covering your asses. <laughs> Shot in the chest. Eh, it's not like she sold weed or something. I kind of feel the meeting between the writer and editor. <laughs> yeah. Did 
Thank you, Tech Support, for doing the PEMDAS on that. Um, 64% odds. Domest <laughs> It'd be a 64% increase uh, of chance, so... Oof, caboose. That's um. Mm, I'm gonna pull it. Just, just I'm gonna pull it. That was that was boring. I gotta pull that one. Um. Imagine if his wife were black and a citizen, or or Hispanic and not a citizen. <sighs> yeah. CPD officer hit in chest after gun discharges during argument with wife, which also begs the question, who was the aggressor? Did she pull the gun on him or did he attack her and she was defending herself? This begs the question, right? Like, what was the situation? The gun attacked the wife, then shot the husband. Duh. I... Um. I mean, given she's a cop. <laughs> given she's a cop. It's entirely possible she escalated the situation to the firearm level without even thinking about it. But knowing the domestic violence abuse rates amongst cops, it's entirely possible that she legitimately felt physically threatened and in fear of her life because her husband is fucking losing his shit. Or they're both fucking idiots and some crazy ass shit went down. Either way. Either way, we don't know. And we don't know whether he's white or whether she's white. We don't know any of these details because they haven't released their names. We don't know who did it. If a cop couple shoots their partner, does it make a sound? All right. But but what we do know it's highly likely from what from what expertise are you drawing that from, Cybot? Because I taught self-defense classes. We, my family owned gun ranges. My mom was tapped to be on the Olympic shooting team. My father, stepfather has a uh, federal firearms license. It's, it, it's most likely to uh, occur in the chest, seeing as most people are trained for two to the chest, one to the head. Like that, from what experience are you garnering that opinion? because I have training and experience in this field, both from law enforcement, military, and private contractor training. Like, I've, I've trained around all of these people. So, yeah, you go for center mass. It's, it's extraordinarily likely to have occurred that way. But with that step that said Effectively, anything within 21 feet is essentially the same shoot. 
either way. Um, so yeah. Um, I'm reminded of my two homies from the Pacific Northwest that spent a year and a half in fucking jail because the uh, FBI did a raid on their house and they found anarchist literature. They'd spent time in jail for books. They weren't even convicted. They just drug their shit out. And that was the evidence that was held and used against them was that they had anarchistic literature in their, uh, on their premises books. I ever get raided. I've got shelves full of anarchistic literature. Some of it covers the historical era of the propaganda of the deed. Like I'm doing, I'm doing fucking 20 to life just based on the books that are on my shelf. Like that's, that's the world we live in. Right? Like I've known people who have done time for books Okay, don't think I don't take this shit lightly. Or don't think I take this shit lightly. What you in for? Books. Um it's it's real. Oh, BNW gang. Yep. Um And yet the Nazis with Nazi literature, literature will never see time. Anything can be used as evidence against you for a holding. So I bought. And the fact that you don't think there's malfeasances or miscarriages of justice that happen within our system makes you a fool. And one that denies reality, apparently. Joey John I've seen it I've seen it happen yeah which miscarriage of justice do you want so I bought you want murder you like false accusations of murder? Do you want thought crime? Do you want what 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 do you what which one which one do you want? Do you also want No, oh no, there's there's literal laws on the books that say anarchists can't hold office. That's 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 a real fucking thing. People get held without bail. Like, that's, yeah. Silence, Communists can't work, pub, uh, work public office in California uh, also, if I recall. Yeah. Where's the um, Center for Excellence one? Oh, let's see. HR 1955. HR 
Um, that's the one that's been used against anarchists a whole bunch since the mid 2000s. Yep. It's just a catch-all. Homegrown terrorism. I mean, we have some of it. Night letter. Oh, we have some of it. Uh, yes, uh, Carpe. Yeah, that's what they're calling them these days. But um, back in the day, <clears throat> yeah, they used other other terminology. And keep in mind, anarchists have. Um, oh my God, another one said the thing. Everybody, they said the meme. They said the meme. I I I I legitimately. I'm not I'm not fucking with you. When I thought for sure. Nobody's actually running around saying that. I was like, that's an internet meme. Nobody's that dumb. Nobody's that fucking, like, nobody lacks that level of self awareness. It's adorable. It's fucking adorable. There's legitimately people running around doing that. I couldn't believe it when it happened. It's only happened like twice now. There's, there's very few fucking losers running around doing it. Oh, Glazy did it. Okay, there we go. Of course, Glazy's on board with it. Mogul, you don't know what an anarchist is, do you? The fact that you have to, you that you support a team at all is hilarious to us. You see, you, you already support part of the system that we disagree with in its entirety. See, you're just as complicit as the Joe Biden voters, in our opinion, right? Like you're 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 just as guilty. You had someone coming to your chat last night as well, Radhom. It's fucking hilarious, Patronum. I agree, right? Like this is you're you're just as guilty as anybody else. Um, I, whoever Brandon idiot is, um. Glazy, no, it's not. Glazy, you've never been out of Florida. Like, when's the last time you were in Europe, Glazy? When's the last time you were in Southeast Asia? When's the last time you visited Australia, Glazy? Uh, you as well, young mogul. When's the last time you were out of country? Seriously, when's the last time you were out of country? Glazy, I've never left America and I never will. Exactly. Exactly. You have no perspective. None. Oh, Glazy, can you leave America? Do you have a passport? Bullshit. Bullshit. It's hilarious when American chuds come into a fucking Australian stream to heckle U.S. politics. Rat Hom, they have no idea. They have no idea. 
Det, det, det. God bless America for containing Americans. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's amazing. What is America then, if not a police state? You don't own your body in America. You don't own your property in America and all that's enforced. Um, of course Biden's dog shit, Glazy. Of course he is. He's a fucking war criminal just like Trump. They're all dog shit. What, what part of this is confusing for you, Glazy, still? What, what part of I'm an anarchist don't have you not picked up yet, Glaze? You've been here for how many months? What part of this is confusing for you? I believe in uh, usage rights, Cybot. I believe in personal possession and, and usage rights. Beyond that, the concept of private property is an oppressive hierarchical one. I've worked in customer service. I don't believe most Americans are nice at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Straya. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's hilarious. The, the fact that... I... I it never ceases to amaze me. Oh, Mogul, we were already fucking talking. You just provided us a, dis a pleasant distraction from the fact that we were talking about a cop shooting another cop in a domestic violence incident. That's all. Yeah. Which is hilarious, yeah. Cop on cop violence in the household, 40%, which somebody did the math. Two cops make 64% increased chance of domestic violence happening. Yeah, and before that, we were talking about transphobic reactionary violence. You've done nothing. You've just given us a pleasant distraction with stupidity. Just helping the metrics. Uh, where's our amazing emote? There we go. At best, you're a dull pet for the moment. And let's face it, young mogul 16 is probably 16. And barely has had his balls drop. Hey, Mogul, you want to come on the air? Watch this. Hey, Mogul, you want to come on the air and actually have a discussion? Or do you just, are you just a fucking cowardly meme lord? I'm guessing you're like a 16-year-old edgelord who really doesn't know shit about shit. But that's my guess. Yeah, edgelord's just going to edge. And he's not even a fun edgelord like the French post-structuralists that nonsense would study. But you know what? Why not? Come on the air. No, you won't. People like you never do. <laughs> oh, Glazy, you're a fucking pussy too. Don't be fucking throwing that term around. Not even edgy as the gentlest edgelord, Benedict Spinoza. See, here's how this is going to work. Ah, thank you, Nightloader. Keep an eye out. <clears throat> I mean... 
Again, just helping the metrics. Also proving Twitch's fucking account creation system is useless. Oh, you know what I can do though? Watch this. Um, No, it'll be a mistrial. That's what the judge is setting it up for. It's not it's not an acquittal, it's a mistrial. Yeah. That's and increases um, chances of uh, acquittal upon mistrial and retrial increase drastically. This has come from somebody who's the son of a judge. Trust me. They're, they're, they're gunning for mistrial. That's what they're shooting for. So, young mogul, here's how this is going to work. You're going to come on air and have this discussion with me voice to voice. Or you're going to go away. And in the meantime, you're going to say some smarmy things. And you're going to be like, meh, 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 meh. but I'm going to play a sound clip. Some of our listeners will know um, what's about to happen. And otherwise, you will be gone. We can talk about just about anything. But you're going to have to actually man up and have the conversation. You're going to have to engage in a dialectical exercise. You're going to have to use rhetorical device. You're going to have to think on your feet and not hide behind a keyboard. So, oops. And that, and there's the cowardice. They always bitch out. They never have the fucking, the gumption to do it. So bye-bye. Um, and now I'm going to need to know in chat who is Fry My Calamari on Discord and who is Anja on Discord. And if you do not speak up, you will be removed from the server. Just know that. Glazy's never had the nuts either. Okay, cool. Fry my brains. You're good. So it'd be fry my calamari. And Anja, I'm going to need you to speak up or I'm pulling the account. Just because it's probably... No, no, no. You're fine. You're fine. It's just when we challenge a chud like that and then they get removed from community, can't keep them in the Discord community. You're good though, Fry. No worries. Uh, Glazy, you've never had the uh, <clears throat> gumption to get on air either. So for you to... Uh... No, Cybot. 
he refused. He actually said he was leaving because he's not our pet. He cowered. He 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 chickened out last second as well. Um, as for we we don't actually generally debate, but I will argue with you from time to time. But I'd rather gauge engage in just a conversation. I like to know people. I like to elucidate ideas. I like to get people to elaborate their ideologies and positions. Glazy, just admit it. You're a fucking coward. That fucking. The Empire of Florida will never come to be because you, um, <laughs> fly away. Um, okay. That person's been removed. Um, yeah. If, if, if they, yeah, Fry, like, if, if they come in and they start spouting off fucking bullshit, then, yeah, I will tell them to get on air with me and to engage in the conversation. Actually participate. Don't be a fucking cowardly edgelord and hide behind your keyboard and shit like that. Um... No, it's because it's actually difficult to get banned on this channel. You have to bitch out or you have to TOS. And Cybot, I've yet to challenge you to get on air. Though one of these days it's coming, know that. So you better be prepared. Oh God. Oh Jesus Zippy. <laughs> um It's a fair it's a fair uh analysis. Scion spore. Um that's a fair analysis. Yeah, unsubstantiated arguments, confrontational pump is bullshit. Um a unwillingness to actually engage in like a proper dialectical exercise. Yeah. Um, it does happen. We do have decent chats sometimes. We like legitimately, we have some decent uh, chats sometimes. Um, but it's a rare, it's 98, 99% of the time. Um, well, you know, while we're here, um, oh, oh, you know what? Um, fucking, um, Cybot. I have a series on fucking YouTube you should watch. It's about why ANCAPs aren't anarchists. So far, there's how many hours of content analyzing them from internally, uh, internal ideological and philosophical perspectives from their own. Rothbard, Hayek, Von Mises. Mm -hmm. Using their own stuff to take down their own stuff. Oh, you'd love it. You'd absolutely love it because they aren't anarchists by their own definitions and their own words. You'd, you'd absolutely love it. Because I know you've uh, had opinions on that matter. All right, Caboose. I hope to see you guys after uh, after stream because uh, we're going to do a seven days session. Well, Fry, that's my point. I did I did speech and debate constitutional issues, mock trial, contemporary issues, which is also a debate class. Um, I've done, I even did teen court. I haven't seen a debate proper in ages, right? Like this is, this is why I, I, I hate using the term, right? That's not a debate. 
I, debate has formalized structure. It has rules. It has judge, uh, judge, uh, judge, uh, judgment methodologies, right? I don't, it's not a debate. Y'all are just arguing. And I'm okay with arguing. That's fine. But don't characterize it as debate. That, that's, I consider that a, abuse of a prescriptive term. Uh, Scion Spore, I wouldn't worry about it if I weren't an anarchist. They, they, it, they use bad faith inorganic argumentation in order to inhabit anarchist spaces and provide themselves political cover for their shit positions. And so as an anarchist, it's, it's an invader force that you need to expel. It's like the pedophiles trying to glom on to the LGBT movement all the time, right? It's like you have to kick them to the curb or else the rot will, is contagious. So. Yeah, Charlotte, a formal a formal debate is a beautiful thing. Um, but arguing online isn't a debate. <laughs> That's because they have, Cybot has no fucking uh, absolute, Cybot doesn't argue in good faith. First, you have to know that about Cybot. You can go through their fucking channel history, right? They don't argue in good faith. And anytime they get properly challenged or their idea gets undermined, gotta go, sorry. They do it all the time. They just dip the fuck out. Um... Yeah, they'll, they'll come in, ask a question, get a proper response, and then just fucking bail because they were expecting. Uh, Cybot, you did it on November 1st. You did it on 1020. You did it on 1011. Oh, and it looks like 910 maybe as well, depending on how we wish to characterize that. Radhom, if you want more like why ANCAPs aren't anarchist theory, I'll give you my playlist. That way you don't have to read it. You can just listen to it because I know that's a thing for some people. Um, but yeah, I trend I trend away from doing proper reading theories. A bike. Um, just because most people like glaze over. with uh with theory right like i consider it a failure if you have to talk about philosophy people don't operate like that so having to operate like that is mm. but i did want to finish off chapter five tonight and then i said um um i would finish um yeah um uh, I think the link is actually, hang on. Now let me see if this works in here. Yeah, there you go. The command is fuck and caps. <clears throat> Fry my brains, thanks for the follow. Um, so there you go. So far we're up to, I don't know, five, seven hours, something like that. 22 videos. Um, so let me finish chapter five. And then I said we'd not read any more like anti-ANCAP theory uh, for the rest of the week. We'd take it off. Um, but hang on. I got to disable all my fucking alerts and shit like that for it. Okay. And 
and then kill that. Uh, chapter five, <clears throat> chapter five out of 11 and like chapter five, um, it, Charlotte, it's sort of a, like the Twitch stream archive is deep. Um, but the sort of standalone videos are sort of a new thing that we've started doing. So, yeah. Um, there's a few different uh, Twitch... Uh, there's a few different YouTube playlists. Um, there is the standalone playlist. These are just standalone videos that have their own topic unto themselves um, from the stream. Um, they are... Let's see. History of May Day and why Labor Day is a sham. Operational security for the activists. Charitable remainder trust. Anarcho-syndicalism. A quick primer to jury nullification in the U.S. How to piss off Jesus. Officer fatalities or how to control a populace using, um, I believe it's using lies and force is the top uh, topic of that one. Then there's Degen story time, uh, which have, uh, you know, it's me just telling degenerate stories. Um, and yeah, then the, the, the Twitch stream archive. Yeah. Um, Hey rumble. Um, Charlotte, if you want what you can do, you can always do is go to my website, Kai's things.com K A I S things.com. Um, and under the stream section, there are playlists and you can access stuff that way. So, um, here. So, right. So website stream entire episodes, playlists, standalone videos, degen story time. No, and caps aren't anarchists. Here's why. And also we have a reading list as well. So <clears throat> yeah. So always all of my stuff. Um, all of my stuff gets published on my website, right? Like that's, if I'm, if I'm happy with it, if it's complete, um, yeah. Welcome. Photography, writing, streams, even some old, um, game sessions like tabletop we did are recorded on there before Twitch, before Twitch. Um, it's, it's on the website. So if I'm happy with it, um, it's up there. And it's all licensed under Creative Commons, share alike. Um, Non-commercial, remix allowed, share alike, um, Creative Commons licensing. So like all my photography, my writing, my streams, it's all Creative Commons licensed. So, yeah. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> uh. Mm. Jury nullification is oh well here. I don't I don't know if there's a command for it. There it is. Um Scion Spore, just click the link that's in chat right now. Yeah. And I I have an article on jury nullification. You can read. All right, let me get through this chapter, and then we'll go back to, like, non-recorded fucking side stuff. Um, but it's a pet project of mine, and it needs doing, so. Uh, and this will get us within striking distance of halfway. This document is not short, y'all. It's not short. <sighs> <clears throat> chapter 5. Will privatizing the commons increase liberty? So-called anarcho-capitalists aim for a situation in which no land areas, no square footage in the world shall remain public. In other words, everything will be privatized. Murray Rothbard, Nations by Consent, page 84. They claim that privatizing the commons, examples, roads, parks, etc., which are now freely available to all, will increase liberty. Is this true? Well, 
we've shown uh, already in this uh, in this segment how why the uh, uh, why the claim that privatization can protect the environment is highly implausible. But here we're going to concern ourselves with private ownership of commonly used property, which we all take for granted and generally pay for with taxes. It's clear from even a brief consideration of a hypothetical society based on privatized roads, as suggested by Murray Rothbard in For New, For New Liberty, pages 202 to 203, and David Friedman in The Machinery of Freedom, pages 98 to 101, that the only increase of liberty will be for the ruling elite. As so-called anarcho-capitalism is based on paying for what one uses, privatization of roads would require some method of tracking individuals to ensure that they pay for the roads they use. In the UK, for example, during the 1980s, the British Tory government looked into the idea of a toll-based motorway. Obviously, having toll booths on motorways would hinder their use and restrict freedom, and so they came up with the idea of tracking cars by satellite. Every vehicle would have a tracking device in, uh, installed in it, and the satellite would record where people went and which roads they used. They would then be sent a bill or have their bank balances debited based on this information. In the fascist city-state company town of Singapore, such a scheme has actually been introduced. If we extrapolate from this example to a system of fully privatized commons, it would, be, it would clearly require all individuals to have tracking devices on them or some other means of tracking so that they could be properly billed for use of roads, pavements, etc. Obviously, being tracked by private firms would be, such a th uh, be a serious threat to individual liberty. Another, less costly option would be for private guards to randomly stop and question car owners and individuals to make sure that they had paid for the use of the road or pavement in question. Parasites would be arrested and fined or locked up. Again, however, being stopped and questioned by uniformed individuals has more in common with police states than liberty. Toll boothing every street would be highly unfeasible due to the costs involved and the difficulties for use that it, that it implements. Thus, the idea of privatizing roads and charging drivers to gain access seems impractical at best and distinctly freedom endangering if implemented at worst. <clears throat> Of course, the option of owners letting users have free access to the roads and pavements they construct and run would be difficult for a profit-based company. No one could make a profit in that case. If companies paid to construct roads for their customers and employees to use, they would be financially hindered in competition with other companies that did not, and thus would be unlikely to do so. If they restricted a use to purely their own customers, the tracking problem appears again. Some may object that this picture of extensive surveillance of individuals would not occur or be impossible. However, Murray Rothbard, in a slightly different context, argued that technology would be available to collate information about individuals. He argued that, quote, it should be pointed out that modern technology makes even more feasible the collection and dissemination of information about people's credit ratings and records of keeping or violating their contracts or arbitration agreements. Presumably, and Anarchist society would see the expansion of this sort of dissemination of data, society without a state. So perhaps with the total privatization of society, we would also see the rise of private big brothers collecting information about individuals for use by property owners. The example of the Economic League, a British company who provided the service of tracking the political affiliations and activities of workers for, employees, uh, for employers springs to mind. <clears throat> And of course, these privatization suggestions ignore differences in income and market power. If, for example, variable pricing is used to discourage road use at times of peak demand to eliminate traffic jams at rush hour, as is suggested both by Murray Rothbard and David Friedman, then the rich will have far more freedom to travel than the rest of the population. And we may even see people having to go into debt just to get to work or move to look to work. Which raises another problem with the notion of total privatization. The problem that it implies the end of freedom of travel. Unless you get permission, or this seems more likely, pay for access, you will not be able to travel anywhere. As Rothbard himself makes clear, so-called anarcho-capitalism means the end of the right to roam or even travel. He states that, quote, It became clear to me that a totally privatized country would not have open borders at all. If every piece of land in a country were owned, no immigrant could enter there unless invited to enter and allowed to rent, purchase, or, uh, or purchase property. Nations by Consent, page 84. What happens to those who cannot afford to pay access is, uh, is not addressed at all. Perhaps being unable to exit a given capitalist land, they will become bonded laborers or be imprisoned and used to undercut workers' wages via prison labor. Perhaps they'll just be shot as trespassers. Who can tell? Nor is it addressed how this situation actually increases freedom. For Rothbard, 
a totally privatized country would be as closed as the particular inhabitants and property owners, not the same thing, we must point out, desire. It seems clear then that the regime of open borders that exists de facto in the U.S. really amounts to a compulsory opening by the central state and does not genuinely reflect the wishes of the proprietors. Nations by Consent, page 85. Of course, the wishes of non-proprietors, you know, the vast majority of people, don't matter in the slightest. Thus, it is clear that with the privatization of the commons, the right to roam, to travel, would become a privilege, subject to the laws and rules of the property owners. This can hardly be said to increase freedom for anyone bar the capitalist class. Rothbard does acknowledge that, quote, in a fully privatized world, access rights would be obviously a crucial part of land ownership. Nations by Consent, page 86. Given that there's no free lunch, we can imagine we'd have to pay for such rights. The implication of this, um, the implications of this are obviously unappealing and an obvious danger to individual freedom. The problem of access associated with the idea of privatizing the roads can only be avoided by having a right of passage encoded into the general libertarian law code. This would mean that road owners would be required by law to let anyone use them. But where are the absolute property rights in this case? Are the owners of the road not to have the same rights as other owners? And if right of passage is enforced, what would this mean for road owners when people sue them for car pollution-related illnesses? The right of those injured by pollution to sue polluters is the main way that so-called anarcho-capitalists propose to protect the environment. It's unlikely that those wishing to bring suit could find, never mind sue, the millions of individual car owners who could have potentially caused their illness. Hence, the road owners would be sued for letting polluting or unsafe cars onto their roads. The road owners would therefore desire to restrict pollution levels by restricting the right to use their property and so would resist the right of passage as an attack on their absolute property rights. If the road owners got their way, which would be highly likely given the need for absolute property rights and is suggested by the variable pricing way to avoid traffic jams mentioned above and were able to control who used their property, freedom to travel would be very restricted and limited to those whom the owner considered desirable. Indeed, Murray Rothbard supports such a regime. In the free <laughs> society, they, the travelers, would in the first instance have the right to travel only on those streets whose owners agreed to, let the, uh, to have them there. Ethics of Liberty, page 119. The threat to liberty in such a system is obvious to all but Rothbard and other right libertarians, of course. To take another example... Let us consider the privatization of parks, streets, and other public areas. Currently, the individuals can use these areas to hold political demonstrations, hand out leaflets, picket, and so on. However, under so-called anarcho-capitalism, the owners of such property can restrict such liberties if they desire. Calling such activities initiation of force, although they cannot explain how speaking your mind is an example of force, likely. Therefore, freedom of speech, assembly, and a host of other liberties we take for granted would be reduced, if not eliminated, outright under a right libertarian regime. Or, taking the case of picketers and other forms of like social struggle, it's clear that privatizing the commons would only benefit the bosses. Strikers or other activists picketing or handing out leaflets in a shopping center are quickly ejected by private security even today. Think about how much worse it would become under so-called anarcho-capitalism when the whole world becomes a series of malls. It would be impossible to hold a picket when the owner of the pavement objects. For example, as Rothbard himself argues again in The Ethics of Liberty, page 132, and if the owner of the pavement also happens to be the boss being picketed, then workers' rights re are reduced to zero. Perhaps we could also see capitalists suing working class organizations for littering their property if they do hand out leaflets, so placing even greater stress on limited resources. The IWW went down in history for its rigorous defense of freedom of speech because of its rightly famous free speech fights in numerous American cities and towns. Repression was inflicted upon wobblies who joined the struggle by private citizens, but in the end the IWW won. Consider the case under so-called anarcho-capitalism. The Wobblies would have been given criminal aggressors would have been criminal aggressors as the owners of the streets have re refused to allow undesirables to use them to argue their case. If they refused to acknowledge the decree of the property owners, private cops would have them taken away. 
Given that those who controlled city government in the historical example were the wealthiest citizens of the t- in town, it's likely that the same people would have been involved in the fictional so-called anarcho-capitalist account as well. Is it a good thing that in real account the Wobblies are hailed as heroes uh, of freedom, but in the fictional one they're the criminal aggressors? Does converting public spaces into private property really stop restrictions on free speech being a bad thing? Of course, Rothbard and other right libertarians are aware that privatization will not remove restrictions on freedom of speech, association, and so on, while at the same time trying to portray themselves as supporters of such liberties. However, for right libertarians, such restrictions are of no consequence. As Rothbard argues, quote, any prohibitions would not be state-imposed, but would simply be requirements for residence or for use of someone's per, uh, some person's or community's land area. Again, nations by consent, page 85. Thus, we yet again see the blindness of right libertarians to the commonality between private property and the state. The state also maintains that submitting to its authority is the requirement for taking up residence in its territory. See chapter 2, section 3. As Benjamin Tucker noted, the state can be defined as, in part, the assumption of sole authority over a given area and all within it. The Individualist uh, Individualist Anarchist, page 24. If the property owners can determine prohibitions, i.e. laws and rules, for those who use the property, then they are the sole authority over a given area and all within it, i.e. a state. Thus, privatizing the commons means subjecting the non-property owners to the rules and laws of the property owners, in effect privatizing the state and turning the world into a series of monarchies and oligarchies without the pretense of democracy and democratic rights. These examples can hardly be said to be increasing liberty for society as a whole, although so-called anarcho-capitalists seem to think they would. So far from uh, so far from increasing liberty for all, then privatizing the commons would only increase it for the ruling elite by giving them yet another monopoly from which to collect income and exercise their power over. It would reduce freedom for everyone else. As Peter Marshall notes, in the name of freedom, the so-called anarcho-capitalists would like to turn public spaces into property into private property, but freedom does not flourish behind high fences protected by private companies, but expands in the open air where it's enjoyed by all. Demanding the impossible, page 564. Little wonder Proudhon argued that, quote, if the public highway is nothing but an accessory of private property, if the communal lands are converted into private property, if the public domain, in short, is guarded, exploited, leased, and sold like private property, what remains for the proletaire? Of what advantage is it to him that society has left the state of war to enter the regime of police? System of Economic Contradictions, page 371. Ah, chapter five done. Chapter five done. We got memes. (laughs) Kaiser, I see that meme. Chapter 5 done. Oh. Six has six sections. Seven has four sections. Eight has eight sections. Nine is just one section. Ten has three sections. And eleven has seven sections. Um, what was that in total? Thirty more sections. Thirty more fucking sections. Just to refute a bullshit ideology that everybody fucking can see through. Like, most people can see through just on the surface. It really does take, like, for every minute of bullshit, it takes like an hour to refute it. It's it's astounding amounts of work that have to be done to refute the bullshit that people spout off about.
Oh, uh, Chaotica. That's um, section two, I think. Uh, chapter two. There's a few sections about that where we talk about the ahistoric um, elements within Rothbardian um, ideology. Yeah, he's completely ahistoric. He completely, um, it, it's called the uh, Immaculate Conception of Property. Um, anarchist, uh, anarchist tech support. Thank you for the uh, gift sub and congratulations, Chaotica. Um, yeah, uh, it's called the, it's generally referred to as like within the document at least and like offhandedly, um, as a sort of pejorative. It's the immaculate conception of property because Rothbard just like, it just magically fell out of the sky and you are ju the just owner of it. Um, Yeah. It's, it's, it's absolutely absurd. They're, um, they're also, an um, because they come from the Austrian school of economics, they're also anti-empiricist. They don't believe in empirical science. I'm, I'm not kidding you. Like the Austrian school of economics and thus ex by extension, of course, uh, Hay uh, Hayek and von Mises. And then by extension, of course, somebody like uh, Rothbard and Hoppe and Rand and all these other fucking douchebags, right? They're, they're anti-science. They quite literally state that no amount of empirical data can ever be used to refute their theory. Only a theory can be used to refute theory. Right. This is completely like maligning the term theory within the scientific understanding of the term theory, of course. But yeah, this, yes, you already, chaotic. Yes, the science of praxeology. It is, it's batshit insane. It's batshit insane. You can have a billion data points and they'd be like, yeah, that doesn't work. It is, it is the craziest shit to get into. And yeah, it's like... Third, there's a difference between uh, 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 usage rights, personal possessions, and private property. Private property is the privatization of the commons and the means of production under capitalist modalities of operation. It is essentially a theft from, uh, from future generations and from those that, are, uh, that exist in the current time, right? There is a difference between usage rights and personal possessions and private property. Vast differences. And if you need an in-depth exploration of that, um, I could probably point you to a couple of those videos where it was covered at length already. Um, Yeah, so chapter two, um, I can, if you just want the, the playlist is exclamation fuck and caps, um, and that'll get you a YouTube playlist. Everything from section two is basically going to be an exploration in private property. So if you want to know more about it, at least from an anarchist perspective and an anarchist perspective of a, crit of a critique of Austrian economics and thus an extension of right libertarianism and so-called anarcho-capitalism via... Rothbard and Nozick and Rand. You don't understand Marxist Leninism or anarchism. Cool. You want to come on air and discuss it? Because clearly you don't understand any of those topics. Because anarchists believe in the commons as well. I, I always love educating somebody on anarchism. What... What what a part of this is confusing? What part the, of the privatization of the means of production is not anarchist? Are you familiar with much anarchist theory? Have you ever read any anarchist theory? So you've never read any of it, have you? Cool. Uh, just so everybody knows, that's either a cowardly chud or a pivot. I'm not sure which is on. You're going to be on your bingo card. How much? Um, okay, come on the air and discuss it with me then. I'd love to have the conversation. I'm not that well schooled in uh, Marxist Leninism, um, but I have ten plus years in anarchist theory, plus fifteen years of direct action before that. So come on the air and school me. I'd love to know more about it. Yeah. 
I've read some Marx. I know enough about Lenin just from anarchist history that not a fan. Oh, don't. No, far from enough said. Um, Proudhon, Joseph Pierre Proudhon, the person who coined the term, uh, term anarchism, literally considered one of the first anarchists proper, literally said property is theft in his seminal work, What is Property? It is foundational for anarchists to be to criticize private uh, privatization of the commons. It's been that way since the beginning. But you don't understand anything about anarchism, do you? You don't know what communism is either, then, do you? What is communism? He, hence, his a commie. What? What's a commie? What's communism? Oh, Kaiser, are you going to take my to my toy away? Fine. Land back. Land back. Ugh. You're right, Kaiser. You're right. I know you're right. I know you're right. There was no way he was going to actually answer any of my questions. He wasn't going to come on air. He wasn't going to fucking ar ar uh, talk in good faith. He was already fucking, you know, pivoting and fucking. Uh, I know you're right, but you know. <sighs> yeah, well. Um. All right, so chapter five is done. What is that? Yeah. I wouldn't doubt that in the least, Kaiser. Yeah, I'm sorry, um, Wither. Download this clip. That was chapter five? Yeah. 5.0. Cool. You were an MLM for some time before moving back to post anarchist inspired by Takun. Uh, just too much with the genocide apology before then. I'd rather you be inspired by somebody like Newman or McQuinn, but what is your understanding of post-anarchism, Chaotica? Let me just sate my, my inquisitive mind with asking you that question. Um... Oh, and I want to check. What is the link on that one? It's just section five. All right, cool. Let me get this uploaded. Um, no, and caps aren't in. 
Anarchists. Recording date was today. Next, 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 next. Publish. Done. Cool. <clears throat> Uh, all right. I just like to get that workflow done. Um, also, I kind of want to know. All right, what do we what do we have? Forty point five. Was that last one's length? It was okay. Um, okay, so we have six six hours and twenty minutes of fucking why an an caps aren't anarchists so far. Six hours and fucking twenty minutes. Um. Charlotte, it, the bot is make echoes and it, it yeah, it, it basically, you know, I'll show you on the stream deck. I can just push 30 seconds, 45 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds and grab a clip of what I had been doing, or I can just push record and stop. And the bot will literally take that segment and give me a, a, a version of it. And yeah, I can just put it on YouTube and then add a description and a title and shit like that, right? You can also, it'll do comp highlights compilations for like gamers and shit like that. The mods and chat could be given command over the bot as well. So you could do like play the game highlights and shit. Yeah. Um, because I'm always zippy. I'm in pain 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Plus I wake up right before stream. So I'm always tired. Oh, yeah, um, Rad, have you never seen? Here you go, Rad. I'm mid flare, Zippy. Um, and then here's the other direction. There's nothing you can do to help, Zippy. That's that's not gonna help. You're just giving me more shit to do, Zippy. Right? You understand that? This isn't assistance. This is just more shit to do. All right? Like, you're not helping. Again, it's intractable nerve pain caused by damage to my nerves on a body a body wide scale, Zippy. There's nothing you can do.
I, I thank you for the kind thoughts, but there's nothing you guys can do. I, I am doomed to suffer worse and worse and worse as time goes by. Every day will be a worse day for me. Tomorrow will be worse than the next. The next after that will be worse than the one prior to. Next year will be worse than this year. A decade from now, if I make it, will be even worse than this decade. Okay? Come to terms with that because that's the reality I have to live. There is no happy, happily ever after for me. One day the pain will get so bad that I will check out. This is the reality of the situation. Okay? This is just the truth of the matter. <clears throat> Astro, I will never use a wheelchair. I will never I will never subject myself or my loved ones to using a wheelchair. No. The, the A frackle. The the day I lose my mobility. Nah. I'm done. Yeah. Just the reality of it. Um, yeah. Oh, my mouse is drained. Oh, Frackle, that not, not good. <laughs> but Kai, have you tried to insert something you do on a regular basis? Yes, you should drink more water or maybe yoga or maybe vegetables. Or, um, you know, have you tried B, B10 or, uh, I'm sorry, B12 or B6? Um, well, have you checked your magnesium? Well, what about your calcium levels? What about your potassium levels? Well, could it be a medication you're on? Have you cycled your medications? Yes. I've tried it all. I've had all the tests. I have idiopathic, progressive small fiber, non-length dependent polyneuropathy. The nerve cells that are responsible for uh, uh, translating hot, cold vibrations and pain are under attack by my own body and are damaged beyond repair. They're damaged at a rate faster than nerve cells can regenerate. This causes intractable pain and burning on an everyday, every moment basis. This is what I live with. So it's best you come to terms with it as well because it's enough of a struggle for me to come to terms with it. So, yeah. Whether I wish it would, I wish it would. Um, yes, and one day it will get so bad that I do not wish to be here anymore for it. And the medications they have to treat it are not good. Let's just put it that way. So that's the reality of the situation. Hereditary autonomic peripheral neuropathy. Um, 
About two years ago, I had a spinal cord stimulator implanted and it helped with my pain management. Yeah, mine isn't autonomic, mine's SFN. So it's far more diffuse than the autonomic stuff. The autonomic stuff, you have large fiber nerve involvement, which I mean, I wouldn't want, I don't know. I don't know which one's worse, right? Snappy, they're both, they both suck. One could affect your heart rate and your breathing, right? And the other one just makes life literally painful. So I, I you know, yeah, snappy. It, yeah. I feel you. I feel you. I mean, are you fucking dumb? We're sitting here talking about polyneuropathy. Like, we're, we're literally... Like... Wait, one of them's talking about... Auto, one person's talking about autonomic nerve pain. I'm talking about small fiber polyneuropathy. Have we moved on from individual sovereign rights? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Like, obviously. Like, painfully obviously. We're talking about living with chronic pain disabilities right now. Yeah, snappy, which affects your mobility, which is a whole other fucking issue. Like I said, if I lost my mobility, I'd fucking... No, you dumb fuck, not from the jabs. God, you really are fucking functionally dumb, aren't you? Like, how do you, how do you actually get on in day-to-day -day life with, like, people? Like, are you, or are you just a fucking shut-in? Holy shit. Rather than a specific area, all of them. Charlotte, all of them. <laughs> That's hilarious. Me being a shut-in and not even being this bad. I chaotic. I have fibromyalgia, so solidarity from a spoonie. How close are we to swapping bodies medically? Not even close. Zippy, not even fucking close. Not at all. It's not going to happen. Snappy, I'm still going, basically, without medication, without any dulling. Yeah. Yeah, no, Charlotte's not a shitty question. It's just, yeah. Yeah, because you can have small fiber neuropathy in a specific area or region. Um, like, you can have it as a result of an injury or something like that, right? As an accident or a nerve entrapment, you can, you can end up with small fiber neuropathy in a specific area or region. Whereas polyneuropathy basically means, yeah, poly refers to generalized. It means everywhere. It means any and everywhere. Spoon club recognized. Yeah. Yeah, my spoons are running low. I'm about to fucking do some shit. Oh. Yeah, you, you happen to know know the cure for idiopathic progressive small fiber polyneuropathy? Do you happen to know anything about the topic we're actually talking about? No? All right, then shut the fuck up. Um, whether nerve entrapment usually happens from uh, uh, small uh, from um, soft tissue, like ligament and tendon entrapment, but it can also cause be caused by compression injuries. Oh, Charlotte, yeah, I'd, I'd answer that any day of the week. Uh, skeptic, you're fine. Like, I, I mean, but, you know, the person who was, I was responding to has been a dickhead for a while now. Mm. 
I'm not well versed in the Chicago School of Economics, Glazy. Um, I can discuss Austrian at length. I can discuss Swiss decently. Um, <sighs> geology. I absolutely hate geology, so I've never put amount of time into it. Anime. Yeah, I don't. I don't do anime. Um, I don't know much about it. I've watched a few. I've got ones I like. Um, media studies in general. Um, the glorious dino killing anime. Um, regional histories. I'm not huge on like um, Asiatic history. I, I I know somewhat India, uh, like the subcontinent of India history, but as far as like Mongolian and China uh, Chinese history and Southeast Asia history goes, never put any time into that. Um, I don't know a ton about the Celtic region either. To be perfectly honest, as far as historic um, studies go, um, I'm trying to think what else I haven't touched. Oh, math, math, math. Glazy, if you want like a blind spot for me, math. I hated math. I wasn't terrible at it. I just hated it. Fucking trigonometry was my downfall. Ugh, I just hated doing math. Um, yeah. See, I wouldn't even know that, Rad. I haven't put any time into learning. So, the fact that it's been lost is lost on me, even. Um... Yeah, the, the math stuff, I, I just, I, I can't. I like trig only thing I got and like doing. Holy shit, Charlotte. Yeah, trig was my downfall. I fucking hated it. I just was checked out entirely. Um, Oh, art, art, art history. I've never put a fucking minute into it. Art history. Never put a fucking minute into it. So, yeah. Total blind spot that I've never even bothered looking into. <laughs> nice, Charlotte. Um... For two, damn, I plug quite a few of your blind spots. Um, for two, that's why I keep you around. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I don't like, I've never given a shit about art history. Um, and I know the story of humanity can be told through the lens of art history. Don't get me wrong, I just don't give a shit. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, skeptic. Glazy wanted to know if there was something I hadn't I hadn't studied, and like I'm just racking my brain going through the topics. Um, <laughs> Solarial. I mean, kinda skeptic. I mean, that's that's my level. That like Van Gogh and fucking Da Vinci existed and Michelangelo and the Don and Donatello and Raphael. Like I can do the turtles. They were art they were artists, right? Sculptors and shit, right? That's dude, my my level and understanding of art history is basically nothing. Like I know Picasso existed. 
as to the impact that Picasso had upon art movements and cultural relevance and w w what era and what fucking fu I, I don't none of that none of that shit none of that shit exists in my brain I, I've never known it I've never looked into it I don't care to look into it um yeah sure I'll get rid of that for twos <sighs> no <laughs> um it just is that way, right? There's just, I'm, I'm, I am, I am human after all, right? Like I have a pretty fucking broad lens of analysis. Like there's a lot of tools in my tool belt. I can't fucking add art history in there, right? Like I, there's only so much room folks. There's only so much room. Art history, there's something has to be sacrificed. I made a judgment call. It's art history and math. Sorry, not doing them. Not doing them. Skeptic, everything is politically connected. Politics governs and, uh, and in, uh, intertwines into every single topic in human history and all of existence in the social sphere, social sphere and individualist sphere. Of course they're politically connected, but that's fucking neither here nor there, right? Like, who has fucking time? Get a life, touch grass, do some shit, get friends, go out, live a little, right? There's only so much time in the day that you can fucking de devote to studying so many topics and theories and philosophies and, and fucking uh, sources of academia. You have to fucking do something at the end of the day, right? Like you can't, you can't, you can't live your life that way, man. Yes, of course, politics intertwines into everything. You can tell the story of human politics through math. You can tell it through the story of architecture. You can tell it through the story of fucking sociology. You can tell it through the story of exploration. You can tell it through the story of fucking sculpting. Politics involves and intertwines into every single fucking thing. And of course, art history is one of them. But I'm not fucking learning art history. I'm not learning fucking more math. All right? Like, that's just the end of the day. Oh, of course he is. Of course he's spouting. But there are pictures. <sighs> Sippy, I'm somebody who sits back and enjoys this. The pictures don't do it for me. Um, from time to time, there's a there's a chart. Does that count as a picture? Right? Like, this is a good time for me. Right? I, I... <laughs> nope, not even close. See, well then, you know, if a fucking basic table or chart... Hey, chart, charts count? Charts count. I can, you know, there's only so much time in the day. There's only so much time in your life, especially when you have a progressive illness, right? You just need to. <laughs> Slow real. Hey, bro, we heard you like charts. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, I know. Do you ever consider that maybe they don't consider that a lie, skeptic? Maybe their characterization of it is a little more nuanced or a little less nuanced than what you're looking for and that maybe it isn't best to characterize it as a lie outright because a lie intent, uh, conveys some level of malicious behavior or bad faith acting. Um, yeah, with there actually, there kind of is. A lot of the... Um, like legitimately a lot of what Foucault specialized in um, would be classified as BDSM theory. I'm not kidding you. The, the interpersonal power dynamics that he explored and how those con constructs are, uh, are constructed um, came from his fascination with uh, sexual deviancy, uh, deviancy and BDSM. Yeah. Yeah. Like legitimately, like a, a chunk of French post-structuralism can be tied to BDSM. 
so yeah, there there kind of is BDSM theory. Oh, nice, Kaiser. <clears throat> Kaiser, <clears throat> you're going to does this does this still bother you? How old was this? How old were you when this happened, Kaiser? Because this is going to bother you when you get older. This is, this is, this is going to ache as you get older. These kind of injuries are transformative. You were 21? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's rough. Um, okay, so hang on. Somebody, I'm a semi-mathematician with a bacon number lower than my Erdos number. Thanks to, uh, thanks to Twitch. Um, What's your, um, what's your EBS? Because there's a Sabbath, right? It's EBS. It's not just Erdos or Erdos. I fucking, how do we fucking say that dude's name? Um, what's your EBS? Because it's, it's Erdos bacon Sabbath, right? Is, is the full fucking, it's an EBS number. Um, but I am curious, what is what is your your Erdos um, number and what is your bacon number? For those of you who don't know what the fuck tech support and I are on about now, um, <clears throat> Erdos, Erdos, all right, there we go. Fucking however you say that fucker's name. Every time you bring in an umlaut, shit gets weird. Um, within German, it would be er, be like er. No, I'm not, third. Um, one is a infamous mathematician who had like tons of collaborations, like 500 some collaborations. E6, B3, S something. Okay, so you don't know your distance to, you know what? That's a respectable one. I don't know what my uh, what my E number would be. Um, my bacon, I think, is something in the three or four range. Uh, Sabbath, I'm sh pretty sure it's probably a, like a two. Um, and then, um, yeah, I, I don't know what my Erdish number would be. <clears throat> oh, it would be seven, like out of the gate. Um, just because I know you. And so, like, automatically it would be a seven minimum. Um, so, there we go. No. No, man. I'm not Jewish. Scott, Irish, and German. Though your obsession with the, the Judaism is a little telling, man. It's a little telling. B3 is bacon, a U.S. vitamin. Now I've got to get that daily dose of rashers. It's the distance of nodal hops between you and an individual. Erdish was a mathematician. Bacon is Kevin Bacon. And S for Sabbath as in Black Sabbath. 
And so, yeah, your EBS number is your distance to each of these individuals. And it's sort of, it, it is an interesting thing. It, it's, it, it really kind of, it kind of does plot you in the social group to a certain extent. Hey, Al. Uh, open, I mean, we're doing the Erdish, um, Bacon Sabbath number, your EBS number. Are you defined by your parents' ideological directions, turd? Because that's sad if you are. Oh, shit, gotta look up that, uh, if that one RA that got me arrested in college played at a festival of Sabbath. See? See? Your Sabbath number. <clears throat> Astral's got an E7 B4S3. Oh yeah, cupcake. Yeah. Or thereabouts. <laughs> Hell. Mine most assuredly did not. Um yeah. You do understand that those two are conflict with one another, right? I'm a libertarian, a social democrat, in fact. <laughs> Matic, go on. Um... Brothers and opera singer dropped the ladder too uh, hard. I performed with him some. Okay. So astral. Astral was okay. So that explains the S three. Yeah, Erdish would be seven based off of just fucking tech support being a six. So, I can't believe they're actually doing the meme. It is hilarious to me. It is. It's. I. I. If you would. If you would bet me money on like Friday, that people. Your S number is two. Holy shit, man! All right. Yeah, it's gonna be a lower number than mine. I'm gonna be in that like three to four range. Um, E6, B3, S2. The fuck? Yeah. It's an interesting, it's, it's, it means nothing, but it's always interesting. <laughs> oh, we don't ask about that side of my family. We don't ask about that side of my family. Like, we don't ask questions. Then come on the air and discuss it with me, turd. You, you literally, you fuckers seem, to un, uh, seem unable to engage in intellectual conversation. Says the person with the username of turd the third. Come on the air and discuss it with me. Come on. Right? Like, literally a quintessential fucking sophomoric joke. No, you're not. But that's neither here nor there. I've talked to fucking literal Swedish neo-Nazis. Oh, hey, that one's gone. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> um 
All right. Oh, uh, real. Uh, okay, Radhom. Your EBS number is the distance of nodal social connections to um, Erdish, who's a mathematician, prolific mathematician, um, Kevin Bacon, and Black Sabbath. So, if you know them, it's a one, right? If you've worked with Erdish, if you've worked with Kevin Bacon, if you've worked with um, with Black Sabbath, your number, your EBS number would be a one, one, and one. E1, B1, B1, S1. If you know somebody who worked with them, two. If you know someone who knows someone, three, right? This is your EBS number. Oh, because of six degrees uh, of separate uh, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. That's that's why. Um, it's it's all it's all based off of six degrees of separation. The 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 it was a a, a concept that um posited that um no two people on earth uh, uh, that that two people on earth are usually six or fewer acquaintance acquaintance links apart and so it was oh god um it was something like a magazine article or something like that saying Kevin Bra Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon is such a prolific actor in Hollywood that everybody has worked with him and sort of this idea snowballed. Just modding for a streamer account cuz if so Mike Bacon numbers too. Yeah, it's acquaintances. Tech support. The, the 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 relationship has always been loose. It's always been described as acquaintance. So, yeah. Yeah, that counts. Hi, right, Charlotte. Bacon numbers two. Not sure the other two. Oh, I've just started ignoring him. He's not going to contribute anything useful to the conversation. So why? Like, he's not going to get on air. He has no, he doesn't have the fucking, as I always say, the gumption to do it. Um. E R D O with umlauts, S er, Erdish. I've been as I've been told is the correct pronunciation on it. Um, yeah, E R D O, two dots over the O. Those are called umlauts, and then an S. If you lie about your number, are you faking bacon. Yes, I like it. Yeah, why not? Solarial, you're not wrong. Dude, something about that fucking era of math Hungarian mathematicians. Like that era of Hungary produced a lot of mathematicians. Yo oh, yeah, it's acquaintances. It's always been listed as acquaintances. It's an O with a double ac uh, acute accent. Is it really six pairs? 
that I've seen it typed wrong a whole bunch of times in my life. Interesting. Duly noted, which explains the fucking, um, the, the difference in pronunciation, because I was like, an umlaut over an O would traditionally produ produce like a ir sound. But, okay. Cool. Thank you for that, um, modification, correction, whatever, six pairs. But thank you. The Hunger Umlaut. Hungara Umlaut. Okay. The full quote is, note the pair of long accents on the O, often even in Erdis, uh, Erdish's own papers, by mistake or out of typographical necessity, replaced by an O with the more German, uh, familiar German umlaut, which also exists in Hungarian. Interesting. Thank you, six pairs. So yeah, out of necessity, sometimes it has to be re replaced just typographically. Because they don't have the fucking character for it oftentimes. Interesting. Um, Are we done with this person? They're getting creepy now. Wither, wither, band turd, reason creeped out. How? Oh, that was okay. Now he's coming on to people in chat, which is just. And when the person he's coming on to is like, "Yeah, I'm fucking done too." Yeah, that's that's. Oh, and they wouldn't get on air. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is great. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me, let me crip, crop it. So remember when uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene was giving away a free, uh, giving away a 50 cal rifle, and a few of us signed up, like yeah, I'll take your fucking, I'll take the gun off your hands, you crazy bitch, right? Um, apparently that email, um, got shared around. Yeah, who she give it to?
This is great. Oh, the turf is in Discord. I see that. Um, well, I leave it to you guys. Do we actually want to hear from this person? Ten bucks, gamer words. Sure. Just got here. Dave Chappelle's in the Discord. Wow. Yeah, basically. <clears throat> uh, let's see. You know what? Fuck it. Flip a coin, please. Looks like we're going to hear from him. Sometimes I just want to leave it to a, a trauma bonding. Here we come. Sometimes I just leave it to a, to a coin flip. Because why not? <laughs> L. Um, Doug Stanhope is the greatest living comedian. That's L. We've, we've done great lengths on, uh, on comedy on this channel. Give me a sound check. Count to five, please. Are you trying to make me make me count or just consistently say some shit at a volume so I can adjust your volume to mine so everybody can hear us in equal sure. amounts. Jesus fucking Christ, man. Oh sorry. Don't be so uh don't be so uh you know. The easiest way to do that is to just have you count to five. One, two, four, three, five. Fuck me. I gotta step it up for you. Huh? Don't believe in property or private property. There's a difference. <laughs> There's both a legal oh, economic state, state there, owned property is okay, I guess. Again, I don't believe in this. I, I believe in the absolute, uh, uh, absolution, uh, absolute dissolution of the state. Sorry, <laughs> Jesus Christ. What I believe in the dissolution of the state. The state doesn't meet, uh, meet philosophical hurdles that anarchists put forth to justify its authority, it's founded upon coercive and oppressive ideals. Therefore, well, it doesn't. The state, it, it doesn't. The state should represent the constituents, the people, not uh, not authority. How do you define authority? Well, well, why? Are, you know. Hey, by the way, are you drunk? <laughs> hey, people already want to know. Are you drunk? <clears throat> hey, your adrenaline is, is off the charts. This is just What's how up? I engage with bad faith actors. Bad faith? Mm -hmm. Everybody can listen. And how, uh, how many how many drinks have, how many drinks have you had? That I'm not bad faith, you know. How many drinks have you already had today? Uh, none. You had to think about that. Yeah, multiple people are already stating you sound well sloshed what do you want me to say uh admit that you've probably been drinking not at all okay <laughs> it's a difficult question i know right um well it's an accusation no problem um six pairs wants to know if you're swedish or finnish Irrelevant. 
But if no, your flags and geographics, you know, geography, you can just check the Discord. It's right there. So you're Norwegian. Exactly. Um. So what do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about medical studies? Uh, you know, COVID? No. What do you want to talk about? Um, I'd like to discuss um, right libertarianism. Right libertarianism? Yeah, because are, are you left or right libertarian? Huh. Because you make a claim to be a libertarian and uh, uh, I believe Social. a sock dam. I'm a social democrat, okay. and uh, yeah, libertarian. Uh, what aspects of libertarianism do you ascribe to? No, let's let's start with you, let because uh, I literally you're have hundreds of episodes. Here, as, so I have hundreds. I have hundreds let, of episodes let, espousing my ideology, philosophy, and economic let, foundations. Let your audience hear you out first they, and they know my I'm position gonna answer. they know my positions i've got i'm, hundreds, I'm pretty I've, sure I've, they don't i've broken i've broken through the four digit hour mark at this point for content produced right i have multiple publications some of which get significant views on a global scale my positions well, are my, well known. my first claim was that you're a marxist leninist and so, i'm pretty sure i'm right so what about my uh, philosophy is Mar uh, Marxist-Leninist? What part of it is centralizing authoritarian communism? About using uh, in, uh, distributed well, individual... Uh, first of, of all, your, your, uh, your stream name here is... Uh, Radical. From the uh, second def dictionary definition from the Oxford English de uh, Dictionary, meaning fundamental or systemic change, especially that which in a uh, within a political system. Radical. Yeah, so you, what so you part of that, to what part total, of that is Marxist a Leninist? A totalitarian uh, communist uh, society, right? No. Without uh, property ownership, private pro property ownership. Again, you are not familiar with any anarchist philosophy whatsoever, are you? No, because it conflicts with your statement. Uh, and that's literally, that's literally, the exact the, question. Li literally, Joseph Pierre Perron. What is property? Property is theft. Literally, the guy who turned, uh, coined the term anarchist and was at constant well, odds with you, Marx for you, being a centralizing You, you live communist. in a, a confined space, uh, whether or not it's oh, so a you want you want to or, you want to have a, a country. you want to have a linguistic dis a distinction made. So we're going to have the descriptive versus prescriptivist uh, argument uh, now as well. No, no, you're you're talking about definitions here, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, what I'm claiming is uh, that you're. You're saying that <clears throat> an individu individual <clears throat> shouldn't own anything. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm saying privatization of property is the problem. Well, privatization of property drives the world. It uh, so, it's so did absolutely so did, uh, so did feudalism. Uh, and in so did monarchism. Individual... Oh wait, you still are a boot licking supplicant. You still have a monarch, don't you? Oh, never mind. Sorry. Like that's that's yeah. You guys still have like, a fucking that's monarch. That's hilarious. That's not um, an argument at all. Literally, monarchism drove the fucking world. Literally, feudalism drove the fucking world. But there was a time when those came to pass no, as well. Just rambling. Well, uh, I'm talking about the property ownership of uh, families, the individual, um, a man that's being able to that, provide for his family. That's usage rights. Uh, pro Provide a safe space. That's usage and rights. And you, you believe that... That's possession and usage rights. That's not private property. Yeah, well, uh, when you claim it, when you buy it from the land of the state, of course, it's yours. It should be yours. It's as simple as that. How do you, how do you define privatization of property? What what gives you ownership of that property? First of all, uh, we live in a, an economic system, and uh, we, live in, we live in a society, guys. You, just so you know, you buy it, 
then you own it. Wow. Thank you for that insightful, in-depth analysis of economic, legal, and philosophical constructs. Definitely, this is worth my time. And, what constitutes uh, ownership your, under your, your system? I your adrenaline levels uh, can, can sort themselves out. Uh, oh, Pookie, this is just me. But, this uh, isn't me at default. I'm, 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 I'm really looking forward to, to your explanation mm -hmm. of uh, why this is a bad ideology. Or, you know. Wow, man. Like, I know Euro Europeans have a different, like, tolerance set for alcohol. But holy shit, man. Like, everybody knows you're fucking hammered. Like, everybody can hear you're sloshed. This is rough, man. So, this is typ typical, uh, you know, liberalist uh, attack mode uh, when you can't argue. And... Um, I would like to. I would like for you to get back I, to the actual uh, conversation here. Oh, that's adorable! All right, so well, I'm, how, I'm being polite. Uh, you're yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except you're not. You're you're doing bad faith argumentation, and you're wasting my time being all. drunk on my air. So, what is the point of privatization of property? How does it affect individualism and individual freedom? <clears throat> right. No, so you let's, haven't asked. You haven't answered the question. You haven't answered Privatiz privatization of pro really. privatization. You're, you're hey, to, shut the fuck up so I can to, answer the question then. You're trying to just uh, overflow, privatization of property. Uh, privatization of property. Privatization with, uh, of property. Privatization of property. Privatization of property does not recognize the hierarchical, coercive, oppressive relationship between the owner and and those the rentees or lessees within that uh, space. Privatization of the commons and the means well, of production. Now we're talking about uh, rental. Privatization uh, of property and the means of productions of the co and the commons and the common resources in a society creates is, a, a creates uh, an a, a creates an elite class. Holy shit, this man! Is direct communism. Oh my god! This isn't communism. This is anarchist theory one hundred and one territory. It's not. It's not theory. In holy shit! It didn't. <laughs> Oh my God! Well, Jesus Christ, yeah. man! You want me you're to you want me to answer the question? You won't let me answer the question. You, you're unable to discuss your. You uh, won't let me you know, answer the, the question. Foundation. You literally it's a French won't. Foundation. Oh my God! Fucking a! Can we? We're done here, right? We're done, everybody. Oh, kick me out! Kick me out, then. Oh no! I'm not going to kick you out. I'm just going to mute you. Anyway, Jesus. Fucking Christ, man. Wants, to an wants me to answer the question. Won't let me answer the question. So, like, what, what... Doesn't understand anything about anarchist theory. Doesn't understand the difference between communism, socialism, or fucking probably democracy and anarchism. I doubt this person understands consensus decision making. I doubt this person understands individualist anarchism. I doubt they understand the distinction between social anarchism and individualist anarchism. For sure they've never read Sterner. For sure they've never read Proudhon. Um, like, holy shit, man. The analysis of unjust hierarchical relationships and the power dynamics contained within, which is Foucault, basic territory, right? Um, the, uh, the analysis of those power dynamics and uh, acceptance of the fact that a wage, uh, a wage labor relationship that is constructed upon the creation of the privatization of the commons is an unjust hierarchy that creates an imbalanced social dynamic within a society is foundational to the recognition of an analysis that the anarchists conduct on a daily basis, dating back past Proudhon, but dating back into indigenous societies. It is just formalized by Proudhon and given the terminology of what is property, property is theft, and then formalized for, uh, forward from there in the likes of Bakunin and Kropotkin, both of whom had massive critiques of centralizing authoritarian communists such as Marx. This is a massive distinction. Also, the recognition and usage of so, uh, state or social capitalism in the uh, form of uh, what Mar uh, Lenin would go on to recognize as his form of uh, Leninist socialism, i.e. state capitalism, is also a massive distinction between anarchists and Leninists. But again, who's got time to let me actually answer these fucking questions? But he wants me to answer these questions, right? 
example. I've just answered your question about private property, the difference between Marxism and Leninism, and you didn't even notice you were muted the entire no, time. No, you just, uh, no. You, you didn't even notice you were muted the entire time. Shit. I didn't read a single fucking thing out. I literally did that from memory. That is you wrote. absolutely reading shit off your monitor. So, what's your stance on CRT, Kai? Uh, no, no, we're not moving past this point. We're posting into Discord the picture of my screen. Because as you said that, my hands have not gone forward to a keyboard or forward to a mouse. So, we're going to just go to browser. Oh, sorry, we'll go to top screen. And then we'll go into shared content. That's great. This is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at Discord on top and an OBS panel. Yes. Yeah, so, so you rehearsed. <coughs> you heard, oh no no no! Don't don't shift those it, goals on us now, bro. It, don't shift have those it, goal uh, posts. Memorized. Ah, that's great. That's great. It's almost like I'm an you essayist who you writes. You don't even have to look. You don't even have to look at the script. And pivot. Yep. And pivot. Can't stay on topic, pivots, makes the false accusation no, that I'm reading, hey, the, immediately the, doesn't recognize that I've written topic, this material written on this is, material. Is, the topic is still uh, private. Uh, and yeah, that's, you, that's you have a, you have inf you have information that's, memorized. That's cheating. That's almost like what knowledge is, but you know, that's cheating. Um yeah, Carpe. Like, yeah, you don't have to look them up every time. That's how principles work, dipshit. No, you can you can try to divert with shit talking and stuff. No problem. Bruh, you literally, right out of the gate, you're reading off your monitor. No, I'm not. And then when confronted with evidence that I'm not reading off my monitor, you just go to, well, you've got that memorized. Yeah, because I write essays on these fucking topics. Because I've been studying these topics for over a decade now, and I lived it for 15 no, fucking years. You can't, you can't fucking define uh, the benefits of uh, not having private property uh, the or, <clears throat> or disband private property the benefits ownership. the do you want me to because you haven't asked me that either but i will do that well, as well that's that's really what we're discussing here uh you're you're against private property ownership yes because it creates a class system that is oppressive by its very nature not at all how is it not well, how is it? No, no. Tip for tat. No, you ask me a question, I get guy, to ask you a question, you have to answer it. Uh, you're the guy who's promoting uh, <clears throat> perfect, the I know, perfect rebuttal of, for of people of the world to own their own property. <laughs> people want to know when Norway got Rupert Meado uh, Murdoch Media, just FYI. Yeah, see, see you know... That's just some cheap what? Uh, bullshit. Uh, uh, okay, so Rupert you want you, you wanted to discuss Fox News? You wanted Fox to News you, shit. well, you're, it was because of you're CRT. Spewing out. What's, what, with your, with what your is pink your fucking nails? What is your what is your interest? <laughs> it's ridiculous. What is your interest in um, critical race theory? No, I'm asking you. No, no. What is yours? Because you're Norwegian, and it has very little to do with you. Well, it has uh, everything to do with the media landscape. Elaborate, please. Well, the programming, obviously. Use your words. Mm, no. <laughs> oh, you're trying to ask me questions about the uh, CRT. Yeah. When it's, Why do you it's care? It's really even? my question. Why it's do you my question to you. Why do you care about critical so race theory? Define... Define your views. Don't ask me. I'm asking you the question. It's my question. <laughs> oh, God, Patronum. I hope not. But given that he's Norwegian, that is a possibility. Uh, uh, see, see, the guy, you, you're hiding. You're just hiding. 
Critical race theory is a methodology for uh, analyzing racial constructs and racial relations within a nation that has built its foundation upon a concept of slavery and abused peoples. And understanding those underlying and underpinning philosophies, methodologies, and methods of social organization that have been used on a historical and contemporary basis go further to uh, under, uh, they further our understanding of contemporary issues and how we can better fix these underlying issues. Now you. Yeah. Now me. Yes. See, now now you're talking about uh, a narrative created to create reform and divide people, divide groups like the true Marxist and Leninist originally set out to do. And you're, do, you're doing the exact exactly the same. See, you're you, hilarious, you don't, man. You, you don't have a standpoint. Uh, you have you have a script that you follow. Cool. You don't have a standpoint. Well, I mean, it is you, it is legitimately just, a script a given weak, to me by my CIA masters and George Soros. Guy, you're just a weak guy who relies on uh, the over, over, you know. Uh, no, you, because you can't uh, find the words apparently to even describe an insult towards me now. So, well, do you, do you just trying, want you know? I'm trying to. Do you do you just want me to help you out and call me the Do you just do you just want me to help you out and call call myself a fag and get over with get this over with? Because that's where well, you're headed. You you've can, already you pointed out. Fag. You've already pointed out the pink nails. You're already calling me weak. Well, um, you have do pink you want, nails. Do you want me to? Do you want me to fucking just hold your hand through this? But see, you're you're doing the pink nails just to like cre- create some attention to your boring being. Oh yes, actually, the reason I do the pink nails is that I alternate between pink and blues because after a, a weekend at the spa, I came back with blue, so blue nails because it's so I noticed I noticed that chuds like yourself get all worked up over a dude with oh, paint child. on his fingernails, oh, I'm which so is offended. hilarious. Oh my god! Oh, thank you, Fatal Meltdown. Either way, we have entertained the racist knowledgeless chud for long enough um poly people i hope your stream was well i went well um that was a uh, brief departure uh we we were oh yeah drunk as well also that was that was special um couldn't answer any question wouldn't answer any question um yeah that was fun Oh, yeah. A nice description of what was an imbecile. Um, he was definitely smart and sober. I bet he wishes the Nazis won. Uh, Polly, I hope your I hope your stream went well. Um <clears throat> Yeah, that was that was fun. I you know, occasionally you gotta you know, you have to show. Um I mean, yeah, my D Gen story time stuff alone. Uh, not brave, night loader, drunk. Uh, liquid, it's not called liquid courage for no reason. He was drunk. Yeah. I mean, people call that right out of the gate. You look like an Antifa. I am an Antifa. I am president and CEO of Antifa. I am also a CIA agent. I am also a paid agent of George Soros. I'm also a member of the gay mafia. And I am part of a uh, homosexual cabal and conspiracy that dates into prehistory that has been responsible for the toppling of multiple civilizations and empires and societies throughout the entirety of the globe. I also learned the other day um, that I'm a, technically a, I'm a secret fascist too. On top of all of that, which is which is good because Antifa are really the fascists at the end of the day, anyway, right? So, yes. Oh, um, also I am a member of the Freemasons and the Illuminati. Um, yes. So you know, yeah, it's it's I've got a lot on my plate. I've got a lot on my plate. Is all I'm saying. That's that's you know, a lot a lot of plates spinning in the air. A lot of plates spinning in the air. 
Um, so, yeah, it, it's um, it's an interesting time. It's an interesting time. And a Twitch. Yep. Um, yeah, I know, right? Give me a sec. Do you think he's still watching? <laughs> that one got a little high. I could feel that come up on my thighs. Yeah. <sighs> um... I think you're skirting the issue. Um, since he was so distracted by my pink fingernails, what do you think he thinks about the skirt? Um, ah, yes. Kai was there with me at the March on Rome. Do I tuck it back? No. <laughs> um, I mentioned how much of a wet towel you have to be to think that nail polish of all things is an attempt to draw attention from being boring. I mean, look, I've told stories on air about being a collared domed sub and doing fisting training and shit like that, right? I've told these stories openly on air with, with great, great glee in telling them, right? Oh, professor, professors and PhD, wear them. They are amazing. They're amazing. He's probably consulting his Anders Breivik handbook, How to Deal with People in Skirts. Um, yeah, like I, I paint my nails uh, pink to distract from being boring. Yeah, you're right. Um, like, sure. Skydiving, rock climbing, rappelling. Anarchist from fucking teen years, direct action, Occupy organizer. I was doing consult. Uh, I was doing custom programming at age fourteen. I was in in running an independent IT consultancy here in Las Vegas, uh, where I live, by the way. Uh, at age twenty five, I've engaged heavily in BDSM relationships, dominant submissive relation relationships extensively in my life. I've had a sexual escapades, the likes of which that make story like literally have a running story time. Um. Yeah, it's been a boring run. Oh, I've done all of the drugs, by the way, just all of them. My psychedelic stories alone are, like, off the chain. Um, it's been a really boring existence. I don't know what to do, man. I, the best thing I can do, I guess, to, like, liven it up is to paint my nails pink. GL, no. Not in a skirt. Not in a skirt. Um, drugs are illegal and that's a shame, right? Like, uh, yes, the buffets are, well, some of them are open again. Some of them have completely shut down and some of them have transitioned into what are essentially seated restaurants. You can select from the buffet menu and they just bring it over to you. It's fucking weird as shit. But a lot of them are open. But the ones, some of the casinos took, seized upon the opportunity to just shut their buffets down entirely. Yeah. Um, a skeptic, yeah. Yeah, been there, done that. Good news, bad news, but thanks for you. Gotcha. Um, most of the parking is back to being free again, too. If, you know, if you come here and you're interested in the, like the news, yeah, rich people aren't tied by laws. Why should you be, um, <laughs> Marcus, <laughs> um, yeah, meltdown. It was always a loss leader. It was always a loss leader. It was never making the money. Even when they jacked it through the fucking roof, um, do pink and blue if you feel extra daring. Yeah, I'll fuck it. I'll alternate them one day. I'll alternate them. Oh, much better. Skeptic, much better. Cocaine's a shit drug. 
It's a shit drug. Cocaine, you're up and down, 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 up and down. It's fucking, it's a useless drug. Fucking uh, methamphetamine, you're fucking up through the roof and you're just that way for hours. Yeah. It'll fuck up your life. Don't do it, kids. But, you know, I've been there. I don't have addiction issues. That's the thing. Um, like, if anybody's going to do drugs, like, trust me, like, do somebody who doesn't have the addiction issues, I've dropped like that. Just, I stopped doing SEC one day because the, the come down was worse than the, the high. I was like, oh, well, the, the costs are exceeding the, the benefits. Time to stop. Never did it again. Never looked back. Not an issue. Same with, um, same with math when I did it. It was like, you know, did it for a time. Enjoyed it. Gay scene in Vegas in your early 20s, right? It's a fucking thing. It's a thing. Um, and one day I was like, all right, time to stop this. And I just stopped. I don't really have addiction issues. So like, but that shit, if you've got an addictive personality, that shit will hook you. That shit will hook you and it will ruin your fucking life. So know that. You're lucky I've got an extremely addictive personality. Um, a PDX friend described it as a demon of the gay community. Yeah, it's fucking everywhere. It's fucking everywhere. Uh, it, it, look, I ain't gonna lie to you. Methamphetamine fueled gay sex is amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. There's there's nothing like it. I'm not gonna lie to you. But the chemical addiction will ruin your life. So, yeah. Cost po- cost benefit of analysis. That's that's what you're dealing with. Fat- uh, fatal. I can't speak about any sex. I can only speak about gay sex. Um. I'm, I'm a gold star. I, I'm a gold star. <sighs> um, random question. Do you have a tech focused YouTube channel? No, Zyram. No. <laughs> Um, I've given tech advice. I've done uh, operational. I did a video called "Operational Security for the Activist." It was a segment from a stream, um, but I do not. Um, I don't do tech focused stuff. Um, whether I would know, never disgrace two CB like that. Um, and again, don't do any of this stuff. Um, abide by the laws of your locality. None of this is legal or medical advice. Insert legal disclaimer here. Fucking right, right? like. All that shit. Don't do anything illegal, kids. Yeah. Drugs are bad, okay? Now, if you want to talk about the unconstitutionality of the drug war and how it violates individual uh, and the individual aspects of anarchism, then by all means, we can talk about that in theory. Um... Boss. Um, I have extensive psychedelic experience. Extensive. Like a lot. Uh, shrooms. I, others as well, but mine were shrooms. That, that was my go-to. Yeah. I spent a lot of time as a disembodied consciousness. Floating through the galactic space. Um, redacted, I would never, never recommend anybody do that, nor would I would do, nor would I do that. Um, individual autonomy is based as fuck. That's what dummy McGee, when you guys rated in wasn't understanding he couldn't understand the difference between anarchism and centralizing authoritarian communism such as marxism and leninism and the fact that the matter is used a drunk norwegian so-called libertarian sock dem it was it was amazing right oh who by the way um one of uh, one of the favorite highlights of that for me personally was a drunk norwegian so-called libertarian sock dem being worried about critical race theory Sorry, what? Ethno state says what? Yeah. 
fucking dude. Yeah. Um. So about that hermeticism rant. Look. Eh. Um. I have read and studied the works of Hermes Trismegistus, the thrice born, um, at length during my conspiracy arc, during my, I spent a lot of years stoned. <laughs> um, <sighs> hermetics becomes a double edged sword. I like the idea of hermetics. I like the idea of a balancing philosophy um, against something like, because if you understand alchemy is the foundational is the, like the, is the foundation on which chemistry is built, right? Modern chemistry and a lot of like pharmacology owes its origin points to the, the concept of alchemy and the practice of alchemy. But alchemy had this balancing act against it called hermetics. Alchemy and hermetics were intertwined near, inter, uh, near inexplicably, um, or intractably. Um, and when the refutation of alchemy beca uh, became standardized within chemistry and within what would become like pharmacology, the teachings and knowledge of hermetics were cast aside. Now, they were cast aside, but it was also adopted at the same time. Hermetics became a foundational topic and knowledge base within any of the secret societies that practiced um, what we would generally refer to just as the mystery religions of ancient Egypt. And so they become standardized within certain cultish esoteric circles, right? And then other groups glom onto this as time goes by. And as you, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of like compress a lot of this history, uh, this uh, history down. I was going to say historical analysis, but a lot of this hist uh, history down into, so monkey see monkey do, right? A whole bunch of powerful people are like mimicking shit they don't under really understand on some level, but it's spooky and it's been with their fucking fraternity since fucking, you know, great granddaddy was owning slaves and shit like that, right? And then this sort of leaks out over the years, it gets rediscovered, and then you end up with spirit science. And this is, this is where I sort of enter the fray, because this is where the rant really begins, is the co-opting and mismanagement of what are sort of exploratory intellectual texts from a historical aspect and the intentional misinterpretation of them to manipulate, um, coerce, and delude and grift people, right? If if rich douchebag McGee wants to go to his skull and bones fucking fraternity and they want to talk about as above, so below and shit like that, right? That's fine. That's fine. I, I look fucking I got bigger issues with them. But when you start fucking doing that spirit science grift and you start running fucking culty shit on them and you start talking about how you need to tap into the 11th dimensional energies to cure your cancer and you need to come to our fucking uh, our, our culty like meetup, our convention where you fucking going to sell them crystals and shit. This is where I enter the fray. We got issues here. We got issues. And so I have done at length fucking stretches like literally like rev myself absurd buddhist we're all fucking familiar with this shit from an, like an intrinsic rev was brought up in it um and i put a bunch of years into studying it and buddhist has as well and so like we've done at length fuck this shit sort of stuff because it allows for this um recentering of blame Buddhism does this too, by the way. Many religions do this, but it's you know, Buddhism is also guilty of this in addition to the like sort of Western uh, Abrahamic ones. Um, it allows for easy recentering of the blame, right? Yeah, 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 L, I'm guarantee you've come across this shit for sure, L. Um, because ultimately what it is is that you're being you're allowing the lower dimensional energies to govern your existence see when you allow fear and hate into your psyche those lower vibrational frequencies hold you to the third dimension and this is what higher dimensional entities use as fuel or as food fear is the mind killer yep 
fucking. And so if you free yourself from this, if you embrace wholeness and love, then Carpe, I guarantee you he fucking, he knew some of this shit. I guarantee you, it's all fucking a giant gunked up pool of bullshit. And they all just kind of draw from it to one extent or another. The Masons drew from this and the fucking Mormons drew from the Masons, right? Like it's, it's, it, it is. No, they're all fucking, they're all drawing from, it all comes from the mystery religions of Egypt. This is, this is, I'm telling you, this is all comes from the ancient mystery religions of Egypt. And it all ends up becoming basically you are responsible for your suffering. You are responsible for the bad that you experience in this world. And if only you pay me $50, I will tell you how you can absolve yourself, how you can free yourself from this suffering. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. I see this shit coming miles away. L. Most assuredly can be. I promise you. It takes one grifter and they can turn it into it like that. Uh, it's just three easy payments of $19.99. Um, yep. Um, how did I like DMT Aspen? Not as well as... I mean, it was an experience. Um, I didn't like it as much as though um, like a good shroom trip. No way Jose, I'll slap him. He did. Carpe. He did. That QAnon cult shit tapped into a whole bunch of it. Fuck Egypt for slaughtering all those tribes and cultures prehistory, by the way. Um, Marcus, sir. Uh, ceremonial magic and Crowley orgies would be cool if we could all just admit it's just an emo Ren fair. Exactly, Marcus. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's not magic. It's not fucking magic, folks. It, it's not... It, it's it's not how that works. It's not how reality works. PhD? It all comes down to... It all comes down to... I can't, I can't do... I can't do a Jordan Peterson. I can't do the, the Kermit the Frog fucking nasally shit. Um, it all comes down to personal responsibility, guys. Just clean your room. That's as close as I can hit. I can hit Mickey pretty well, um, but I don't do voices. Um, the power of magic is the guru spot. It's hierarchy. Of course it's hierarchy. Um, yeah, fucking lobsters. Um, <laughs> yeah. Boss, you okay? Glass is coughing, coughing their fucking face off, apparently. Um, Yeah. And then you throw in that QAnon shit on top of it, GL. She gets real. She gets real. I I mean, I've done this at length before. I have a soft spot for grifters. I have a soft spot for con men. I have a soft spot for the art gr the, the the con artist. Uh, well, Lada, you're either in group A or group B. If you're not with us, you're against us. If you don't believe in this, then you're a, a demon rat. Oh, that's, if you, if you don't, if you believe in socialized medicine, then you're clearly a commie, A-B testing. Um, so in group, out group, it could be described as. Um, I have, I have a soft spot for con men. I have a soft spot for the, 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 the art of the con. Um, if then statements. Um, um, magicians, mentalists, hi hypnosis acts, con artists, right? Like they all sort of operate in the same space. Salespeople, politicians, it's all the same sort of thing. And I have a soft spot for him. I've, I've studied at length, like, historic con men. I have my favorite con men. I have my favorite grifts. I have my, I have the ones that I consider the, like, off-limits, like, completely unethical grifts. Um, like the sweetheart con. I, I, I find the sweetheart con completely... You don't run the sweetheart grift, right? 
Um, but the knowledge they possess, the mechanisms that they use to manipulate people are amazing. Their insight into human psychology and how humans operate. And that's valuable information, folks. That's valuable information. Uh, professor, mine is, um, mine is the gentleman um, who sold the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower twice. Anybody know his name? Um, there's no art to sweetheart scams, in my opinion. <sighs> there's a bit of an art. There's a bit of an art, but it's rough. It's rough. <laughs> but I buy this Trump coin. Uh, nobody knows who sold the Eiffel Tower twice. Lustig. There you go. Um, Victor Von Lustig. Um, so Nigerian prince, uh, or what used to be known as a Nigerian telephone. Um, well, okay. So what's the oldest grift on the internet? Oh, okay. I was just say because like the Nigerian telephone predates the internet, right? Like it was, dude. The Nigerian telephone scam has been run literally since like it, Britain controlled the region. It predates the internet by far. I would I would argue that the the Nigerian prince scam is probably the oldest grift on the internet because it would have come into the internet from outside of it. But we'd have to look into the we'd have to look into the archives for it. Um, no, Night Loader, I get that. Yeah, I get that. Um, Kaiser. Oh, fuck me. Fuck me. Cashed in his retirement and gave it to her. Oof. Um, that's fucking rough. I hate it when that happens. Basically, Kaiser, it's it's that's the sweetheart scam. Uh, I mean, it, not really, but it is. Um, the sweetheart scam is generally it's also known as the romance scam. Um, it's it's basically get you get you to fall in love with me, get you to see me as a potential suitor or partner. And then play upon those emotions instead, right? This is a very odd ethical line to draw. But, like, love poems, sex games, building a loving relationship, and then taking advantage of it. There's even an iteration of it where you do a, another play. Um, if you've got a team, I've seen this iteration of it as well. Um, you run the, the standard sweetheart. Oh no, Astral. There's a, there's a version of it. I'll, I'll tell you about the version of it right now. You run the sweetheart, but you meet him. And you sit down and you have dinner you do the lovey-dovey thing that sort of thing bedroom eyes across the table holding a hand maybe right you go your separate ways you're gonna meet up tomorrow or whatever you make your plans upon leaving or the next day a person approaches the target the mark which I've talked about why they're called marks before. Um, they approach the mark with photos of the date and say they are a private investigator hired by the person's partner, husband, jealous boyfriend, angry, 
violent, mobbed up, jealous boyfriend. And that, look, he understands that you got caught in the middle. And that you're not a bad guy, but I'm on the case here and I'm being paid. And if you can pay me the same amount he's paying me, then maybe I can lose these photos. So give me 2500 in cash and we'll just forget all of this ever happened. So now you've taken the, um, the sweetheart scam and you've wrapped it into the threat of violence the threat of exposure, the threat of potentially an angry, jealous cop boyfriend coming after you. There's a whole way different. There's a whole set of ways you can you can spin that off. Um, professor, there's a variety of ways to pick a mark. It depends which scam you're running as to how you pick a mark. Um, it really does. Um, credentials are easy to obtain. Astral credentials are easy to obtain. Yeah, especially when you put it, put pressure on them and you put them in that moment. Um, sometimes the mark picks you, yeah. Um, it depends which scam you're running as to how you pick your mark. But generally speaking, you want someone who either doesn't ask a lot of questions when you apply pressure or asks the questions that are the prepared questions, right? There's a set of questions for every scam that you know a, mar a potential mark might ask and you're prepared for those. And if they fit right into that category and you can box them, good mark. Also, here is a, here is a, here's an actual saying within the con game. You can't scam an honest person. Can't do it. This is why the sweetheart scam bothers me. Because it violates that rule. Every other scam is essentially playing on somebody's greed or their malicious feelings. They're trying to get one up on somebody. They're trying to get ahead. They're trying to grift the system in their own way. And so they get taken advantage of. The sweetheart scam crosses that boundary. It moves into a space where you're using their innate human emotions against them. And it violates an ethical boundary that I've always found just absolutely distasteful within that community. I, I despise anybody who's ever run the sweetheart scam. I, I, I find it solely unpalatable. Um, but yeah, it, there is a saying within the con game that you can't, you can't con an honest person. Because the honest person, the instant that something is hinky, will turn to somebody. They'll, they'll expose the con. They'll go to the person. They'll ask the bank. They'll ask the IRS. They'll ask the police. They'll ask their spouse. Right? They'll have the conversation with the potential jealous lover. I've wronged them, and I should mea culpa. No, wait, no, I don't want you to do that. Right? Marcus, I've heard it as greedy as well, but I've also I've majority heard it as honest because there's other forms of dishonesty than just greed. And so I've always the the, the ones I've I've talked to in Las Vegas, which by the way, this is where I've come to know con artistry is Las Vegas is honest. Yeah, you can't con an honest person. At least you shouldn't. Um, Vegas is chock full. Vegas is essentially built on a foundation of it. This city essentially operates on a con artist level. It's sort of what we do. Yeah. 
yeah, GL. It's fucking, it's filthy. It's, oh, God. Idiots that run to the strip. Um, Vegas is built on suckers. If you walk into a billion dollar building, okay, it costs, a modern casino costs a billion dollars to make. Okay? Billion. With a B. If you walk into that building and think, oh, no, I can win. We'll take your money. You're an idiot. You're a fool. You're a sucker. You're a mark. We'll take them. Ikvost, that's a... That, well, the casinos exist outside the city proper, but uh, yeah, as well. Um, for those of you who don't know the story, I figure since we've used this term a bunch of times, and it's, it's good history, um, we keep calling them marks. There's a reason that we call the marks is because they used to actually be marked. Um, the term mark dates back to um, early pickpocketing. Gangs of pickpockets and thieves would hold up in train stations and bus depots and public squares and town centers and look for somebody with an expensive watch or somebody who pats their wallet in their back pocket and they just graze past them. They'd bump into them while reading a newspaper and looking down. And in the process, they'd, oh, sorry. And they'd tap right back here, some dust or some chalk, right where they can't see it. But the rest of the pickpocketing gang can see. They've literally been marked. So there's a spot of dust on their shoulder. This is the origin of the term mark. It is literally so gangs of thieves could identify the one who is dumb enough to give away where their wallet is or wear the expensive watch in public. That's where the term comes from. So, a little bit of con artistry history there for you. Uh, oh, ex carnies are fucking... Dude, carny folk are dangerous. That's why immediately I was in love with fucking Radhom. I was like, dude, you're carny trash? Which he understood immediately. I was like, you know, I say that, look, when, when you call somebody carny trash, like there's some people that mean it maliciously, but trust me, I love them with to the bottom of my heart, right? I, I absolutely adore fucking carny trash. <laughs> I'm like, you know, they're the best people. They're the best people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll fuck over society and they'll take, they'll steal all your shit, but they are such a tight knit community and they look out for their own and they have their own internal subculture and rules and they abide by them. Right. I, I love that entire aspect of stuff. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. And they're honest about their cons usually, right? Not to you, of course, but to each other. Yeah. I love carny folk. I fucking love them. Oh Yeah. Yeah, gyps, uh, fucking, look, yeah, they're, they're, they're the Romany people or travelers now, GL, but yeah, fucking gypsies. Um, even card counting shifts your odds to 52% in classic poker. You only win out in the long haul, and by then the casino's kicking you out. Uh, you hope. Unless you're curating an atmosphere to get the casino more money from others. Yeah. Um... I'm fascinated by con artists and gurus too, which are just con artists at the end of the day. Watched a doc about Roger Stone on Netflix a few years ago. It was really fascinating. You can really learn a lot uh, about that whole con from him, I think. No, no, it's the skill sets transfer. The skill sets transfer. That's what fascinated me. Here's, here's what hooked me. When I learned that we learned about hypnotism from the church, not the other way around. Right. Like if I say this out loud, it seems like common sense. Right. Historically, the church comes before hypnotists. But you don't have really actually th sit down and think about that. That modern hypno hypnotic practices come from the church. All of the techniques of like a. Uh, like a, 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 a fucking a modified Elman induction. Right. If, if I ran you through a modified Elman induction, it's all it's all mass. It's all church mass. Low droning sounds 
a, 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 a music that is repetitive in nature, low ambient light, a fixed focal point that is raised from yours, repetitive motions, knees, sit, knees, sit, repeated, slow droning of the same thing with repetition exhibited in the group collective around you of the exact same verbiage over and over and over. Right. These are all co- fundamental things. In, in element induction, you do it in your head, but they get them to do it in the church itself, right? And then with the, the, the acoustics, the entire fucking thing is an induction. Mass is one giant fucking induction. And so, yeah, if I ran you through the practice of what a modified element induction looks like from a hypnotic point of view, you'd be like, this is pretty churchy. Yes. Yes, where do you think hypnotists learn these techniques? They learned them from the church, from the clergy. I went to a hypnotist show in Vegas, stayed on stage, and it got it on film. It was a silly time. Um, it's it's a fun time. Where's my anarcho hypno guy? Nope. Here's everything which can lay hold of the eye, ear, and imagination. Everything which can charm and bewitch the simple and the ignorant. I wonder how Luther ever broke the spell, John Adams, on Catholic Mass. Um, it's a fascinating process to study. And that was, I was hooked. I was like, holy shit, man. These, these processes, these techniques that con artists and mentalists and magicians and thieves and politicians, and I know I'm being repetitive there, and CEOs all use share a common pool of origin. Um, astral? I wish to modify that because the fact of the matter is 100% of the population is susceptible to hypnosis because it's a natural state of being. Self-induced hypnosis is just something that will occur throughout your entire life. The hypnotic state is just a natural state of condition. for It's a natural condition for the human brain. Um, so... External hypnotic induction is where that then gets parsed out as you were parsing it out. Some people are less susceptible, but also it depends on the um, on who is doing the induction in what situation they're doing the induction as well. Um, here's the people you need to be afraid of. Any hypnotist that has a good handshake induction. Any hypnotist that has practiced and has a functional handshake induction, be concerned about that person. Like, legitimately. It's it's a terrifying thing to see in practice. This is a person who can walk up, shake your hand, and get you into a hypnotic, hypnotically induced state within the moment of shaking your hand. It's a very real thing. They're not Majority of the population is not going to be susceptible to it at any given moment but the fact that it exists and the fact that they've practiced this technique it's a whole thing it's a whole thing handshake inductions are crazy as fuck it's 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 a terrifying skill set to to have um hypnosis is very real um tech support let me show you one let me show you one No, that's an entirely different thing. Um, let me try and find someone actually doing it rather than explaining it. Ready and just sleep. Ready and just sleep. So we're going to try some street hypnosis here today. We're going to see if we can find somebody out of the crowd and just be hypnotized. Yes. All right, what I want you to do is just tilt your hand out and... Ready and just sleep. Concentrate, drift off, let go, 
let all your inhibitions go. You're completely in control of your body, but you're going to just listen to me. You're going to let your mind drift deeper and deeper into sleep. That's a handshake induction. Of course it's a cooperative person. <laughs> no, it's not. I've hung out with actual hypnotherapists. I've talked to hypnotists that do stage hypnosis. I've um, witnessed the, uh, there's an Australian hypnotist. Um, who, one of his gimmicks is to do a handshake induction and get the person to withdraw $20, uh, $20 from the ATM. He gives it back. But that's, that's, that's what you're looking at. Darren Brown is an excellent hypnotist. He's one of the best that operates in the public space. Yeah. He's an excellent one. Um, he's, yeah, he's very good. He's very good. Um, ah, uh, thank you, Karina. No, of course not. Um, yeah. It's just accessing an alternate state of consciousness. That's all. You do it all the time. Um, yeah, Professorson, you've, you've, you've experienced it. Do you drive? Um, you, do you ever drive, Professorson? Like, I have to know that out of the gate. This is the best example, right? This is the best example. Okay, well, it's easier to just, okay. Have you ever done an activity in which you started the activity that involved complex tasks and you finished the activity and you do not necessarily recall the time in between. So flow state, but for complex tasks, not just like sitting there meditating. That is a hypnotic state. That's what that is. Road hypnosis is the most common version of it. That is a hypnot that is the hypnotic state. But here's the thing, while you're in that state, you're actually suggestible. That's, that's, that's the whole point. In that state, if you have a guide, if you have somebody walking you through that process, you are suggestible. It's, it's, Suggestions have to be coded specifically. The verbiage is very specific. You cannot leave interpretation. You cannot leave that. There's, um, there's very specific like formulations to creating hypnotic suggestion. But you are highly suggestible in that state, especially when you have had somebody guide you through it, which is what a hypnotist does or a hypnotherapist does. Um, so yes, you've experienced hypnotism. Everybody does. It's a natural state of being. It's just, it can be manipulated just like every other state of your being can be manipulated. It's subject to, um, propaganda just like any other state, right? Um, AM radio loves long commutes. Yeah. Wonder why. Um, So, yeah, it's, it's a thing you can get people. There used to be, there's an old wives tale about how you can't make, you can't get someone to do something that they find like morally objectionable or they wouldn't do any way. That's not true. It's not true. It's, I'm sorry. It's not true. It's not true. Darren Brown has disproven this numerous times. Multiple hypnotists have disproven this numerous times. Some of them have done it on the DL. Darren Brown has proved it like on fucking public TV. That it's, it's, you can absolutely get somebody to 
go against their moral grain, you can absolutely get somebody to do something they would never do on a, day, a normal basis. It's 100% a thing. And it's terrifying. Yeah, you can, you can, with enough work, yeah, yeah, you can get somebody to pull the trigger. It's, it's a thing. Well, Codex, where do you draw the line? It's all kind of the same thing at the end of the day. It's the same tool set. It's the same methodology in a lot of ways. It just sort of depends. Six pairs, you have to, you have to will it. You have to let it happen, right? You have to let it happen. There's, there's, you have to, you, you can fight it. You can fight it. Um, I a hundred percent. I'm in. I'm in Astral's territory. Like I. I have. It's difficult to slip it by me, because I've studied the topic. Right. If I walk into a theater, and like, I, I'm immediately like. Lights are low, soft droning music, and the the at stage act starts saying "repeat after me." Uh, alarm bells are going off. Alarm bells are going off. They're they're sorting the audience. They're looking for people who are susceptible. Right. So this is a hypnotist act. This is hypnotism. Right. Like I I know immediately. Like something's happening. Like. There's, there's signs and symptoms of whether somebody's engaging in a hypnotic induction and whether they're sorting an audience. And so, yeah, like there's, there's a hundred percent ways to just absolutely defeat it. Like sans, um, you know, yeah, you have to let it happen. Um, that's the trick, but you can, L, I find Here's the thing I've found. The people who think they're immune to hypnotism, it's about a 50-50 coin flip. It's about a 50-50 coin flip. Self-hypnosis self is a thing. I, I think everybody should learn how to do a modified Elman induction. Um, and do it for yourself. It's not hard. It's not hard. It just takes practice. Six pairs just takes practice. Honestly. Um, there. Here you go. Six pairs. Take that link. And take this link. So the first one's going to have steps and explanations of how an element induction works. And then the second one is going to be El uh, uh, Dave, uh, 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 Larry Elman. No, I'm sorry, Dave Elman. Larry is the son. Um, Dave Elman's own um, transcript. It's his own induction, his own script. Um, you're welcome. So, yeah, the first one will explain the steps to you, and the second one will give you what Elman himself formulated, and you can use it. So... I mean, hypnotic... Altered state of consciousness in a hypnotic state has been proven by fMRI multiple times. Uh, Benjin RTX. It's not fucking woo-woo. It's not hocus-pocus. It's not fucking magic either. Uh, athletes experience it. Professionals experience it. Drivers on a road experience it. It's, a, it's just a normal state of consciousness for the human brain. It's just something that 
other people have learned to manipulate a little bit for show and for gain in some instances. But it's not fucking magic. It's just the same way you get mad. It's just that. It's just a state of consciousness for your brain. Any, but most people have experienced road hypnosis. That's the classic example. You dr start driving and you arrive at your destination. And you're like, what the fuck just happened? Road hypnosis. Oh, yeah. Six pairs. Yeah, it's fucking super dangerous. <laughs> it's fucking super dangerous. <laughs> you're not... You, 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 yeah. Your focus should be like, yeah, no. Super fucking dangerous. It's it's a couple of steps away from being asleep. <laughs> Um, do I believe we're in a simulation? I don't know what we're in. I believe that I am agnostic. I believe that I can't possibly know the answer to that question. I believe that due to the expansiveness of existence and the weirdness that is intrinsic to it and the limited nature of the human brain and my existence lends itself to a position that I can never truly know the answer to that question. I couldn't understand the answer to that question. I couldn't understand the question of that question. So, at the end of the day, yeah, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, if we find exploits to the simulation, now I'm in. Yeah. Yeah, if we get we find some exploits, then then I'm in. I mean, you could argue that like DMT and psilocybin and stuff like that may be an exploit. But at the end of the day, yet yeah, whether at the end of the day, you're just a fucking brain in a vat anyway. So I believe all cats are beautiful. Fair enough. Um, tech support. Um, we don't say spooks anymore. We say specters with a British spelling. So S P E C, uh, S P E C T R E. That's that's the new terminology. Yes, we we don't say spooks anymore. We say specters, specters of the mind. Um. I know, right, Caboose? And give me no clip. Give me fucking no clip. Um. <laughs> uh, Alright. Close that. Close that. Debug camera enabled. Right? Sorry, Wither. Um, six pairs. Um, the Ego and Its Own by Max Sterner. Um, individualist, individualist anarchism. Egoism. Of course, tech support. Of course I have. Um... Do you think it has an effect on hypnosis of the hypnosis therapist? Um, yeah, I think it has a positive experience, numbers. Um, either way, I'm going to rate out to Gemma. Gemma's making music, I think. Either way, let's go say hi to Gemma. I've had a long run here, and i got other shit to do. i got to make some food, and then we're going to play some Seven Days to Die over on, uh, over on Discord. So, for those of you who are new, I'm on five days a week. 
tomorrow's a night show, 11.30 p.m. Pacific. Um, either way, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for rating in from Polly. Um, yeah. Let's go check on Gemma.